All right, everyone, we are going to start this session. Um, very, it's, gonna, it's not going to be a very long session. It's going to be a short session, but still it's going to be valuable because a lot of people um, come here and then ask me some of the questions like, you know, okay, so you showed us how to do the virtual box and all this kind of stuff, but what do I, um, how do I learn these skills online? So what do I do with that? Like, you know, where do I learn these skills? So today I'm about to share some of the courses that I feel like uh, is extremely important for you. And there are, those are free, uh, free full solution I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about one or two videos right here or anything, and not just talk about job skills share here. I'm gonna, first I'm gonna start with something that is outside of job skills share. So people then understand that, look, you can find these, these solutions outside, but somebody has to tell you what to do, right? You install the virtual box, you have all that connections going and everything, but now what do, what do I do as a new technician, as a new technical person, what do I do? Like, how, where do I learn these skills? So I'm about to share some good information with you today. And uh, if you have any questions in the chat, just drop it down and I will try to help you out. And I also, uh, I'm gonna be doing that, you know, IT fundamental giveaway today, again, for um, um, another two weeks that I'm, you know, doing the fasting stuff. So here you go. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and um, let me show you the screen. Okay. So the first thing I want to share today is this right here. This is probably one of the best lists I have created so far. Uh, like, you know, the, the information that I can tell you to go and take these courses and you can really achieve something out of it. So the first thing I wanted to share is Microsoft actually gives you pretty lengthy courses and they're like complete courses uh, through edx.org and, and we're not being sponsored or you know no, no, no collaboration with them or anything like that. It's just that it's a good information available out there and it's for free. So I'm gonna share this link with you all and you can see that I made it in a sequential format. I added it in a sequential format and then I'm gonna say, let, at the last, I'm going to basically tell people that, okay, don't get yourself confused with our courses and other courses. You, you, it's like, okay, do I take your fundamental course or do I take this fundamental course? Well, information anywhere about IT, like specifically when you're starting your career is important for you. But someone to tell you specifically what to take is going to save you time and it's going to gain more skills for you in future too. So IT fundamental IT support course, this is actually from Microsoft. And what I did, I in one page, I just added it about this course and what you're gonna learn from this course. So it's exactly almost the same thing that we're teaching. But again, our teaching is more like, kind of like real world and we take our phones and we show you some stuff and give you the examples and things like that. Versus Microsoft is gonna be a little bit more professional in a way that they may have a nice slides and everything, but they won't be showing you stuff like that. You know, so there's, to you can you can you can see why you should take both fundamentals. So one fundamental I put in here, which is our course, and you can click here and you can go in there. And if you're watching me today, you can just tell me that hey, I need access to that fundamental course, and that's like only nine dollars video access, and I'll give it to you. So now you have this IT fundamental course from Microsoft, and you have IT fundamental course with the more realistic examples from us. Now you combine these two together, and you have a very solid fundamental. That's it. I mean, in the beginning, you just need to know what are the support roles. A lot of people come to us, hey, I want to become an IT professional, but I don't know what titles am I going to apply for, right? You're, you're talking about these titles, help desk, user support technician, IT support technician, this, that, that, so many different titles. So even from this course, you're going to learn some of that roles, stuff like that. And then you're going to go back to our fundamental course and you're going to learn more, right? And then here, it tells you that, okay, what are the core responsibilities or priorities about this agent that what you are going to become in future, right? That's, that's what they're going to talk about. And you see, they go into a little bit of more, uh, you know, other things like improve your support skills by interacting with other roles. And that's what we talk about. You know, you go into this help this position, you start working in IT and then, you know, you work with other positions and that's where you basically become better because now you can see sysadmin. You can see a security professional, you can see a network engineer. And as a help this person, you can utilize and you can, you can like scan their uh, lifestyle and everything like that. And you, you take notes and okay, what do I want to become in future now? I want to become a security 
because that looks cool or that sucks. Or you can say, oh, I want to become a sysadmin because I love that kind of stuff. Or you know, I say, no, no, that's not my thing. Or you can say, wow, I love networking, man. That thing that this person did, that's what I want to do. So as I help this person, right now you have this ability to somebody's telling you that, hey, think that way. Don't just go and start a job and then think in one uh, direction that you're just going to learn skills to make yourself better. No, think a little bit broader than that. You know, look at what other people are doing. And then maybe you can decide right there and then that you can be that person. And then now you have a goal in your life as an IT professional. Because I can tell you that there's going to be one time and there's going to be so many people that are going to come and tell you that, hey, I spent like six years and helped us. I still cannot move out of it because mentally they're so stuck in that environment that just they just can't move up. Now, some people love that. Some people want to stay in that career forever. That's fine. But majority of the people want to get away from that and move up because they want to make more money and things like that. They want to make their lifestyle better, whatever it is, whatever reason it is. But a lot of people want, would want to move up in naturally in any career, right? You you become a, uh, you know, you go to the restaurant and you start working as a busboy or whatever, start cleaning things. But the next time you see that, oh, I can become a waiter. Of course, they're making more money. So, um, everywhere is natural approach right there. So don't get me wrong. If you love this career, if you love your, uh, you know, your, your role in your help desk career, you want to stay there forever till retirement. I have no, no problem with that, but naturally people want to move up and that's where you want to scan other roles. And that's where it says by help improve your skills by interacting with other roles. Hey, Ibrahim, bro. How are you? If anybody wants to, um, and how are you, bro? So anybody who wants to take a questions or something like that, but I'm going to be focusing a lot on this full courses right here. So maybe if your questions are related to this, that would be nice. Here uh, you can see fundamental. So free course from EDX. You basically, all you have to do is to go into it, register, and boom, you got a free course, enroll. You, if, you don't, if you don't care about certificate, which I wouldn't care at all, I want to learn skills, then it's free, free, free right here, free. F-R-E-E, -E, free. And then you basically get in there. You got three in instructors. There are professionals out there and you learn from them. And that's one of the beauty for our platform that we don't want to get you stuck in our platform, right? We don't want to tell you that JobSquareShare is the best platform in the world, right? No, JobSquareShare is designed for to give you skills, to give you practical stuff. But at the same time, we believe in external resources. And that's why we add external resources to our content because we believe in that, right? There's, there's no... Um, this, this is not a corporate world type of uh, system that we want to make money ourselves and we want to you know, gain all these people. Hey, don't go outside. Jeff's question is going to give you everything. No, we call this external resource sharing. If you don't do that, then of course, that's not the real way of teaching any skills out there. Hey, brother, I'll join after I'm finished. How about anytime you, want, you guys want to join, let me know. I'm going to put it uh, in the chat right now let me just put this information in the chat so anyone can join me right now um here I'll copy the url there you go and i'm gonna put the password nine four nine four one okay so now that's what i want to basically kind of like go over today that this link that I'm about to share with you, which I'm going to copy and paste it inside this chat. There you go. There you go. That's it. So you got IT fundamental from Microsoft. You went in there, you learn a lot of stuff. Now you're like talking about communication because a lot of people have this thing. Do Where do I learn soft skills? Now job skills share also provide you some of the soft skills and, and stuff like that. But I'm just going to show you the soft skills right here. Kumar, no, this, this is about skills. So if you want to become an IT professional, you don't need no certification, by the way. You do not need even A+. Plus. But it's recommended to have A+, plus because people like that, right? People, people go and their HR manager just go out there and just say, hey, what are some of the common certifications I should be looking for to hire a help desk? And A+, plus will come in there like the first few pages. Oh, A+, plus, you should look for A+. Plus. But is A plus required? Is this like a hard requirement? It's really up to the description. Look at the description. If they say you must have A plus, you must have A plus for this, then if you must have A plus certification, then go for it. Welcome, Femi brother. How are you? So if you have that, if you have that, um, 
if you have the desire to land a job as an IT professional, like in the beginning, no certification is required. And I can tell you right now from thousands of people that are in our platform based on their experience. Now, like I said, it's a common trend that people look for a well-known certification, which is A+. And that's, to be honest, it's not a bad certification. If you can, if you can do it and you can work on it and you can uh, explain it to someone and you can utilize it, uh, learn something out of it, not just reading the paper and passing the certification. To me, that's a waste of time. That's a waste of money. That's a waste of energy. If you do, people do that. Like they go to these exams and they're just going to like somehow trick the systems and just go by ABCD kind of thing and then pass exam. And those are the people who get really disappointed when they come to our platforms and they learn, oh my God, there's so much to learn. Where do I learn? This, this is the stuff I wanted to learn. And now I have this A plus certification, I have the CCNA certification and I have, I'm clueless. And those are the people that get struck really hard inside because what happened is that they get a little bit, they get, they get a little bit disappointed. Like, man, I just did this certification. I thought I would have just gotten the certification. I'm so happy. I'm just going to land a job. That doesn't work that way. It can work for you luckily, but normally that doesn't work that way. And even if it luckily works for you, you're still lacking and you're still struggling in your career. Um, and that's, it, it's just that, you either learn the skills and get better and then focus on certifications to make your kind of like career and use that certification to, to grow and make more money, stuff like that, or and learn something from it too. I'm not just saying certifications are useless, but certifications shouldn't be used for you to just go there and do the entry-level job. That shouldn't be a stoppage, what I'm saying. You can land a job anywhere you want without any certification. You just need to sell yourself. Femi, brother, how are you, man? Yeah, good afternoon, Danish. I'm good. How are you, sir? How's it going, the fasting and all? Yeah, fasting is good, man. I was just like, okay, let me share this really cool information that I found recently, and I made a link about it. And um, it's kind of like a full-blown learning path that I'm sharing today. Like, you know, you have fundamental from Microsoft, you have communication now. And then here, like, I'm sharing this whole list with people that if they don't believe in our training, they don't they don't watch our training, they're like, ah, this is all about labs, labs, and it's all about money in there. So this is, there you go. We, we already shared a lot of free content in our website. Now here you, here's a big learning path for people who wants to just go in there and learn it without spending any money, right? So- Yeah, yeah I totally, if, if, you, if you will, before I, um, yeah. Um, I totally do uh, um, agree with you. And despite the fact that um, I've been in there now for, I mean, my first real job now is about going to four months, but the pre-job before the this first real job, which is basically about moving things around, was about three months. So, and even at that, I'm humble enough to understand that um, there's never any you you never learn enough. So I'm I still believe I'm still learning. Like I never even started the job. So, um, and that's probably the reason why I would always join. And yeah, yeah, and and the same thing with us too. Like I, if I spend let's say. Um, um, 13 plus years of this is my experience right in 13 plus but the, to be honest 13 plus is in, in a specific area so i'm still learning a lot of things and, and even though i have to sometimes go back to the basics i forget basics to be honest i don't remember basics and i don't need it i mean some of my jobs like i don't need it right but then i know the skills of how to learn it on google very quickly or find a solution or maybe someone can find you know someone can just kind of like guide me so that's kind of like how i approach to certain situation um, I don't know who just joined with a hard, hard, hard. You got to put a name out there because I have no idea who this is right now. So <laughs> I'm going to make another. Steven, how are you, bro? I'm good. Yourself? Uh, good. I see you. I'm going to make you co-host. I'm just a little worried if something happens. Just... Hi, Steven. <laughs> All right. Hi, Steven. Hello. Hi, hey, Femi. How are you? Pretty okay. Well. So the hard, 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 whoever joined, please uh, rejoin again. I'm going to let you come in, but make sure you change your name. Um, it's just a very different name. By, by, the way, by, by the way, Danish, I don't know. Uh, I'm hooked up to you guys. Uh, I was studying, but then I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'll suspend studying. I'll, I'll just watch this. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of like sharing this, this link that I just started creating on this website. And I think this is going to be very beneficial for people who are getting into IT with our fundamental courses, the way we teach. So we have a very un unorthodox way of teaching, right? We go in there, we talk about reality, we have people, and we talk to each other and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But then there's this official kind of way of teaching 
fundamentals from Microsoft. So they sit together like nice professional way of hello, what a blah, blah, blah. So some people like that. Some people dislike that. So we want to give both, both options to people. Right. Uh, and that's kind of like where um, so many people were like, you know, um, in the beginning, when I was making these videos on YouTube, people were like, hey, why are you holding your phone and, and creating a video? That's so unprofessional. You should make it like a nice, um, you know, presentation and, and you should always like, you know, like, you know, show it in like a real high definition camera, sit somewhere and then show like, I'm like, that's still, it's, it doesn't give that reality then. How can I be different than other courses? I want to be a little bit, I have, I should have a little bit more touchy feeling with my members or my students that, hey, look at this. I'm taking this phone, exactly showing you how it's done in the, in the, uh, on the job. So that's where majority of the people start liking that approach. And that's what we call it more real world versus more professional type of, um, you know, teaching. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm making sense over here, but I hope people get it. So when they go to these courses, they will understand. When they go to our fundamental, like when they click over here, they go to our fundamental and they see our videos and then they come back and they check, check the Microsoft fundamental, then there's going to be big differences. And I think combination is going to give you much better uh, skills uh, because of course, these are professionals. They've been there for since I was probably born, you know, so you, we, we have to respect people who are teaching this stuff. So now the second course that I added in this flow is now that you know the fundamentals from this link and you know the priorities, you know everything about that kind of stuff. Communication is extremely important in, in, in IT job overall. It doesn't matter if you're a help desk, it doesn't matter if you're a sysadmin, network engineer, security, blah, blah, blah. Where, whoever you are in your career, it doesn't matter. So communication is very important. And that's where you can learn some of the soft skills. Like for example, it says introduce effective communication strategies, develop this, uh, you know, customer service report skills, rapport, rapport, I mean, I can even pronounce it. Uh, interpret and paraphrase the customer messages. This is, these are very important because if a customer sends you a message, how do you interpret, right? Like how do you see it? And then how do you present that to somebody else also then? You may have a situation where somebody will send a ticket and the ticket is gonna be kind of like a little bit, you won't, you won't get it or you may get it. And it's maybe a little bit like technical. Then how do you take that technical question or maybe you need help and your manager is not checking ticketing system that much, right? You may approach to the room, just open the room and say, hey, I, I got this really high uh, level problem and I need your help. And then explain to me what it is. So of course you need to interpret that message. Then how do you easily tell the manager now so they can get involved? right? So you got to know some of the strategies and that's something you're going to not learn it immediately, but having to learn something from these courses and taking some notes, maybe it will help you because these are the things that I call it more of like, you have to be somewhere to learn these type of skills. Like you're sitting with the human beings out there, right? They're sitting around you and you are learning that naturally. You're getting that stress naturally. So then you get to get better with this stuff. But Understanding something and learning the strategies are always important and that can make your learning process very easy, okay? So make sure you go over the communication course, which I'm not too big on this stuff because I always go by skills, 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 uh, practice, practice, lab, 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 lab. I'm always about that kind of stuff. But here you have the ability and then even in our platform, we give to our paid members, we, we give courses, we don't teach this stuff, right? So it's already there. Now, this is another big area where a lot of people come to us. Okay, Danish, this whole platform is online. How can I learn about the hardware stuff? I thought that I needed to be touching stuff. You know, that's why people go to boot camps and they, some people prefer that. You know, people, you know, one day someone called me like, look, brother, I love your courses. But the day you open a office in Maryland, I'm going to be the first student. Right. I'm like, well, why? Why is that? You know, why? Why is that? Um, he's like, no, but because I like that touchy feeling, you know, I want to basically touch something. I want to open something, touch it. So yes, there is going to be people like that. I mean, and, and that's where it's better to go into these courses, learn about the hardware essentials first, and then maybe start doing some um, buy your own hardware because now you know about stuff, right? Now you have knowledge because I see so many of our students, they would go out there, they'll buy servers, they'll buy expensive stuff and they never use it. 
like now I just spend this much money on hardware and it's laying inside my basement. And I'm one of uh, the example of this too. I bought so many servers, I bought so many equipment, so many networking stuff, and all of that stuff is in my basement right now. Almost 90% of the stuff is just shut down right now and nothing is just uh, eating dust right now. So some of it, because I bought it and I never try to get in there to try to understand more because I felt like maybe I want to learn everything at that time and I never could, I failed. It's there in my basement. So my suggestion to you is make sure you first learn about something and be specific or maybe ask someone, get some mentorship or ask online, whatever. Go to the go to your focus first. Go trim it down, you know, remove every else, other things because there's too many hardware stuff that you need to learn in your life as an IT professional. So maybe focus on one thing. Maybe, okay, for example, maybe focus on virtualization in the beginning and maybe focus on VMware. And in VMware, just add a EXI, ESXi and just learn something. Install 6.7. I don't know if there's 7.0 just came out, I guess, maybe. Install that, learn it, learn some virtualization, get some thing going on. And I just recently added a video about VirtualBox. So if you feel like you don't want to do that hardware stuff, then maybe on, a, on your laptop, do something like that. And then learn about it. But if you want to specifically talk about hardware, then I think you need to, to invest money, get some hardware for yourself. Now, somebody say, how do you apply? How to get the certificate? To get the certificate, you need to go to the EDX and you need to pay that $99. I don't, I, I don't have any clue about certification. You can get the, what I'm just talking about skills. You can get to these courses for free. Uh, so I just shared this link with you, Gopi. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it again. This link, you just go to it. You just click on these links, these blue links right here, and you go to each specific course to learn more skills right here. And this is not about jobs to share, by the way. It's an edx.org, pretty well-known platform. I think most of you know about it. They have tons of tons of uh, um, courses out there. But the reason I did, the, did it this way, because you will get lost if you go to their platform for free, free stuff. And you're going to be like, oh, should I take app development course? Should I take exchange, blah, blah, blah. Should I take... Uh, Office 365 security, blah, 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 from Microsoft. And there's so much out there. I mean, you need to know what you're going to be taking in the beginning. That's why I'm making this video. And that's why I made it in a sequential format. So we did this. Hardware is good now. Okay. Now, hey, trial bro, how are you? Now you come over here, and this is another course that you should be looking at right now. And Windows Support Essential Installation. Now that you learn the fundamental, now you learn the communication skills. Now you learn the essential skills. Now it's time for you to go a little bit deep inside what is your requirement at your job. So think about it. As a help desk person, as a technician, as a level one person, what are you mostly working on? Like what's your core area? Like, right, uh, users, I know that's customer service, calling, uh, that kind of skills. But what, what is technically that, that is required from you? And what is in terms of technology and IT terms, what are we you working on? I'm working on server as a sysadmin, right? That's what kind of like my people will say, yeah, you're working on server. But of course, there's so many other things that I, working on, I work on as a sysadmin that is just, you know, mind blowing that it's there. And as a network engineer, the same thing is going to be for them. But for you, who, what are you working on as a how to help desk? Your main area is client, server, client, right? server client technology, you're working on the client side of, and the client is what? These days, if people call you help desk, you're mainly working on Windows 10 machines, right? Some companies may have Mac operating systems, Linux, but I have seen a trend inside indeed.com, careerbuilding.com. They call you help desk, and that help desk title goes with Windows uh, operating system. If they want to hire you as a Linux technician, they will never call you help desk. This is very rare. They may call you, but it's rare. I, don't, I have not seen something like that. If they want to hire you as a Linux technician, they will call you Linux technician. They'll call you Linux engineer, to be honest. They'll call you some engineer title because in our, in our way, in our, like, you know, what, uh, the things that we know about this career is most of the time people call you help desk, desktop support technician, user support technician, customer support, te sorry, computer support technician. Uh, all these type of titles are given to a person who are working a lot on a Windows environment. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Jacob has a good example. Windows 10, 80, certain enterprise apps, depending on the company's to see exactly what it is. So 80 is there and all that. I'm, I'm going to get into 80, 80 and other type of skills in a second right now. Okay. So here you from this Microsoft course, you're going to learn about Windows installation. And I'm sure you're going to find something cool out there that we have not shared, right? We're not, we're not going to share every single thing 
about Windows operating system. And that's not the flow as well. That's not recommended flow for you to just go and learn every single thing about Windows because you were going to find out as a technician, you only use 20 to 40% of the Windows skills that you're going to need. And at, actually at the domain level, like, you know, at the work level, you won't need more than that. You don't go into specifics of every single thing inside the windows to, to basically use that feature that they have developed. It doesn't work that way. Even home users don't even know 80% of what their, what their windows is about. They just use browsing. They go to browser, they do their stuff. They open their application, Word, stuff like that. They don't just go in there like every single tiny, tiny bits of the windows. They have to do that. And that's exactly for us too. We don't need to learn every single thing, but going into this course, they're going to teach you about something more support essentials, right? It's not about installation of Windows for a normal user. It's about support installation, okay? So instead of prepare Windows installation, install, configure, perform post-installation configuration tasks. I love, I love these two because that's what we do in our life, right? As an IT professionals, we work on these type of uh, systems to make it prepared for a business use rather than just a normal use, right? And that's where we, we start hitting the skills of Active Directory, software installation, software deployments, inventory, uh, stuff like that. We got to pull all these seal numbers out and all these warranty stuff, blah, blah, blah. All these skills started to pop up out there, okay? Okay. Now, this is where things gets a little bit of more advanced for people. And why I didn't put this in the beginning, a lot of people may prefer networking in the beginning because you want to learn about LAN. What is LAN? What is WAN? What is this? What is that? What is these technologies right there? But that's that, that, that method is there. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to go against this method of teaching, by the way, because I am a believer in any type of teaching, but this method, when people start with this networking method to a person who's brand new without telling them any roles or any skills or showing them some reality, people lose their mind. What are you talking about, man? LAN, TCP, UDP. Oh my God, you just kind of lost me right there. This is kind of like where, how we learn technology. And some people can come and say, no, you know, I think they should do it this way because this is a better core learning. And then my thinking is that maybe, why don't we show them a full picture in the beginning? In let's say two or three hours. Let me sh just show them the whole picture. And if they see the picture, and if they have some kind of connection and they start to feel that, is this what I want to do? Then they get to love this type of stuff because they want to get, they're more interested to learn about TCP, IP, all that kind of stuff. If they are people that somebody told them, hey, Steve uh, or Femi, I think IT is a great job. IT is a great career, man. You should go into IT. You're going to be making $100,000. If you are like that kind of person and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, let me just go into this. I'm going to become an IT professional. And if you those type of people, when they don't have that passion or they don't have that drive and they come and start learning about TCP from the start, like LAN, WAN, TCP from the start, trust me, those are the people that usually lose interest because they were not used to that kind of, ah, this stuff is boring, man. Who, there's no, re I mean, there's nothing I can learn about it. What, what are you talking about? This kind of like, what are you talking about? Like, that's kind of like what their responses are mostly. So anytime when I do my trainings, I always show them reality first, then I show them the, the business, kind of like the picture, Active Directory. Hey, that's how the user is going to call you. This is how you're going to work. And now they, can, they, they started to get more interested in IT. That's why I put networking in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in like in third or fourth place. Okay. So now you have this networking there. And now I'm going to come back to these three areas right here. First of all, of course, network technologies, LAN, wireless technology, wire technology, blah, blah, blah. You're going to learn that just by knowing, right? By looking at some of the images and stuff like that. That's just too radical. This area, these three areas is so important for your life in IT. As an IT professional, you want to become a developer too. I don't care. You want to become a developer, you still need to know this stuff. A developer is not a good developer if he doesn't know about technology. I mean, I, will, I have tons of developers that came to, um, you know, like, you know, work, they worked with me as well. I mean, I have two developers working for me. I'm not a developer myself. And then I asked them these questions. Okay. And they're like, man, I think, I, yes, networking is very important for me because at some point I hit these server related queries and I just don't have no clue what they're talking about. Right. So as an IT profession, if you want to grow in your career, you want to become a sec, you want to become a pen tester, you want to become a network engineer, you want to become a sysadmin, you want to become a whatever engineer you want to call yourself. 
you got to master this area, this three areas, protocols, TCP IP, troubleshooting networking, troubleshooting, you're never going to achieve this goal throughout your life. I mean, till now, I am the weakest when it comes to troubleshooting, but I spend my time, people know me, maybe that's the relationship that I built with them. I'm like, hold on, don't pressure me. Let me sit down there. And I just take my sweet time and pull up like five or six different tools. And through the, those tools, I'm able to troubleshoot some of the advanced stuff. Am I still good at troubleshooting like other people? No, there are other people in my career that I've seen and my mentors, I look at them, I'm like, oh, whatever, man, you guys are crazy, right? So that level, and I'm not trying to compete with anybody over here. I'm trying to just tell people the reality, like my mind doesn't work that way. I'm a very slow learner. And I got to see things. I got to process things. I got to sit there. I got to watch things. I got to go to Google. I got to watch videos. I got to combine my solutions. And then I come, come with something. That's it. This is how I work in my, uh, my system works. You may be different. You may be fast. You may be theoretically very good. You may be practically very good. So just focus on that area and keep growing in the networking area. But again, these two areas is going to be the bottleneck of your career, of your life in IT. These two are going to be the bottleneck for you if you don't know this. If you don't know the protocols, if you don't know about TCP IP, then it's going to be the bottleneck. Now, would you understand this in the beginning as a learn, as a level one, level two, even a sysadmin like me? Would we know this stuff like very much like in detail? To be honest, it's about how much you invest your time in it. So the way I do this, I go and go to Wikipedia and learn about protocols. Okay, what do I, what's some important protocol for IT professional? Then I would buy a book on amazon.com, TCP, IP, deep dive. You know, these are books out there. Um, trust me, there's a really good, and maybe one day I'll just share a list with you guys. Deep dive in TCP, IP, uh, buy another book. You have two books now, and now you go to some of the videos out there. Because every time when you watch a video, when it becomes a theoretical stuff, protocol stuff, no videos will cover this more than a book, by the way. I mean, people are not gonna sit there and when one protocol spend like, let's say eight hours on one protocol, that's just, I mean, I'm not sure if there's anything like this. Steven, have you ever seen a video talking about eight hours on one protocol? I'm not sure like that's gonna be ever possible, but. No, I haven't never seen anything like that, no. Yeah, but I've seen a book this big on protocols. So so that's what I'm talking about that. That's what, what basically uh, we are gonna have to, uh, to so uh, that's a good deal. I'm a visual learner. So having a broad understanding helps you don't feel lost. Yes, exactly. I agree with that. Uh, uh, what's up, Masoom? And Jesus, I, I'm open. I, I go by uh, no invitations. I just say, I'm live. And look, Steven joined with me. Femi joined with me. And Kevtech is probably sleeping right now. He's going to join with us in, in, uh, in, a, in a few seconds right now. Okay, I think he's coming. So after that, we go into this, of course, now you learn the broader aspects of learning about Windows Essentials. Now you come to Windows Support Essentials Maintenance, okay? Now, here things gets a little bit of more, okay, what do I need to maintain this window, like updates? And to be honest, you're gonna hear from people, hey, there's updates running on my machine, there's updates pending on my machine, or you need to push these updates, or maybe this update is bad, you need to revert it. You need to fix it, blah, blah, blah. All these kind of things like maintenance kind of things are gonna be a part of your life as an IT technical person, level one, level two, level three, even sysadmins, you, this is gonna be a part of your life, okay? Uh, migrations uh, and stuff like that is also gonna be pretty much part of your life. And, and of course, configure advanced management tools. So this could be any management tool, right? And one of the biggest one is what? RSAT, which is your Active Directory uh, management tool. You have this tool inside your machine to be able to do your job, unlocking users, adding users, adding groups, adding people to the groups, so many different types of skills just from that one tiny money place, right? So you see how things are getting more deep now. You learn the basics, communication, installation, the overview of networking. Now you're going a little bit deep now, okay? Once you do that, then I added these two courses from Microsoft. And I was pretty happy when they had these courses because there is no complete course on the internet that you can say, or there will be any, that you can say, ah, this is the perfect master course of troubleshooting. I mean, you can add, 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 but there's a gazillion amount of errors that happens almost in weekly manner. Like, you know, you'll find out so many type of different type of issues 
that even a Windows developer wouldn't know anything about it because they just found it. It's, it's a bug or is that they need to patch it. So this is absolutely impossible for someone to create a troubleshooting course like that much. But having to have a flow, how to troubleshoot, methodology, knowing some of the things that we do in our real life, then I think these two courses are very good foundation for you. So now imagine if you have, you finish this course, you learn all about these troubleshooting techniques from web browser, troubleshooting monitoring, troubleshoot authentication. Then you go down and then you, you go into a little bit more detail now, boom. And now you got, you covered the whole operating system from start to troubleshooting very nicely for free. Okay, no, no money involved over here. I'm not talking about no money over here. I'm only talking about your energy. I'm only talking about common sense over here. I'm only talking about patience over here. So that's what I'm talking about. How much does it cost though? Free, Kevin, F-R-E-E. -E. I'm, I'm, that's what I talked about in the beginning. Free, here, free. All of this is free. This I'm talking about different website. EDX.org is providing. I just made a flow for you all so then you're not lost, right? So if you say, how much does it cost? Go into this link, open the link, register to EDX. What does it say here? Free. You want a certificate? Then you need to pay them. Do you need a certificate? Absolutely not. I mean, you want it, go for it. But I, I feel like it's a, it's a waste of money if you're gonna buy 99, 99, 99, 99. You just wasted like $500. So, Adonis, do you have to enroll in that where it says enroll? Do you have to enroll first and then you get access to those sites afterwards? Yes, this is, is you have to, yeah, you have to enroll in it. Just add yourself. This is a free registration. You click on enroll and then basically add. And what happened is that this is already done. This is like an archive course. So it's not a live course. It's just right. four weeks. They spend that four weeks to finish this course, but you don't need that four weeks to finish this course. It's already done. So once you enroll in that one, do you have to enroll in each separate one or once you enroll in one, the rest, are, the rest are all covered? No, you have to click on each of the links right here to enroll into each course. Each course, okay. Yeah. And, it, right. and it adds it to your dashboard in edx.org. So then you have a nice way to, just like Jobs Can Share, right? We add a course. Okay. So it's like a, so it's, so it's like one of those learning management systems. Yeah, and EDX is, a, uh, EDX is way big system. I mean, Microsoft is involved in there. Uh, Linux is involved in there. Everybody mm -hmm. have their own free courses in there. Um, and But they, they don't do it free all the time, by the way. This is kind of like they started doing this because they've already done that and COVID is happening. And they're just kind of like, okay, we're going to make these courses for free. So most of it like that. Gotcha. So then the links you're putting in are taking you right to where you need to go. Exactly. To trying to look all around all over the place, correct? Exactly. So okay. that's my, my goal from this post that I created is to be a focus goal, right? It's focus simple. type. All right. It's okay. more of a, and, and also a sequential method, right? I could have right. put troubleshooting the first course and as a newbie, a beginner, I always get these type of questions like, where do I start first? I'm still confused. So I want to, I want to clear that confusion for someone who's brand new Start from here, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, step seven. And now at this point, you're feeling like you're good, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Because you got two different type of shooting courses. So not, that's not only it, because then I went a little bit further than that. I was like, okay, Windows 10 troubleshooting is not going to be enough for a lot of people, right? Or learning. Then they have these other courses like Microsoft Office Fundamental, Outlook, Word, and Excel. So it's pretty cool that so people can actually come over here and you kind of learn about some of the basics because look, what is the basics about Outlook or Excel or, or calendar type of stuff? What, what do people call us? Hey, can you come and share my calendar with this person? Now they can do that themselves too, but they don't know, right? And sometimes they say, hey, can, I'm editing this Word document and I don't know how to do this. Now, of course, technicians are not supposed to be helping people with their formatting and things like that. That's very rare, but they may ask you. And to be honest, something like that may just go to their departments and they have to do their own learning because you're not supposed to become an expert in Excel or Word or something like that. That's not what I'm trying to implement here. I just want to tell people that you just go in there and at least learn the basics of it because people may sometimes call you. You don't want to be in an awkward situation. At least try to perform something with them and then tell them, hey, you know what? I think now this is becoming more of a Word learning. You, I, will, I will give you a different resource or maybe let me talk to someone talk to a manager, a manager will be able to give them an answer that, ah, you know, I think this is not covered in our, you know, our services or whatever they have, you know, and they'll say, okay, I think you should be really taking uh, courses uh, in this area. Femi, you want to say something? 
Oh yeah. Um, I was gonna uh, use my experience as uh, when I was um getting into the IT world. Usually, I'm the type that I mean, I'll just go as far as whatever um um the situation gets me in terms of trying to find out what I might need. And you know, there's this thing about when you reach out to some people that you think are supposed to be um experienced, and not because they're um they're not trying to help you the right way. It's just that you know, every, you know, this thing about everybody seeming to be an expert and having an idea about something. And then one person tells you, oh, no, 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 no. You got to go this way. And then the other person, because I, I prefer someone that's going to be like real honest with me. Like if you don't know that this is the way uh, the route one should go, like don't just tell me based on your own, um, you know, people got like um, biases. Let me put it that way. It's not everybody that's going to be like open to you, like subjective. So what I found out um, for uh, um, uh, from a lot of my even friends that I've, um, been in the um, in IT for a while, or studied IT way back when, or I mean, whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. Is that um, for the? I, I would say like maybe um, forty percent of the time, I got people telling me things based on their own thoughts. Like, oh yeah, just go into it. There's money there. Why are you wasting your time? But that wasn't the kind of because I'm. First of all, I, I think the. Be- the better thing is for, for the person that wants that help also to be honest with them, themselves, to have that open mind about, you know what? Yes, I want to make the money, but I want to learn that truth. And it's only when you're prepared to learn the truth that you're going to um, also be prepared to learn certain things that you might not be thinking of, that a lot of people are not going to be w- willing to tell you about the realities of what you're getting yourself into, rather than just, I, I don't like sweet talk. Let me put it that way. That's why I said I think it's all down to the individual. Mm-hmm. How much of reality? Because you know, I think, I mean, I'm sorry to say it. I don't. I think I'm a cross between the generation right now, the millennials or whatever, and the older ones. And one thing I think, and it's not just about IT. I think generally the outlook to life has changed, and I think it's a generali- uh, generational thing. Everybody seems to want everything right, right like yesterday. It doesn't happen that way. I agree so usually, with you. Uh, I agree with you in terms of the skill sharing or someone telling you that this is the right way or not the right way. Um, but again, I mean, it depends on like, you know, who are you working with, right? So those could, they may have a little bit more powerhouse kind of thing going on, right? So they may feel like that and they're in that position to kind of tell you that and, and you will kind of like go by that, right? Because maybe someone, maybe someone have uh, developed a method that works for that person really nice. Does that make sense? Like they may have developed a solution that is not actually a correct solution, but it works for that person pretty good. And then that person wants you to follow it because if you bring the right solution or uh, try to change that, then of course what? That person has to then do that kind of work. Maybe it's an extra work. Maybe it's not extra work. You, know, you can think it. There's a little bit of politics behind it, right? So that's I understand, that's understandable but in terms of my thing like you can see right now i could have done one thing right now and i'm i'm live and i could have said look i could have easily said that don't go to any other website why are you even going to other website i got everything for you but you got to pay me does that make sense but you got to pay me right why am i doing this why am i sharing a microsoft website another bdx.org in because i'm a platform why am i sharing any any other org.org platform right there the reason for me is this, is that I believe in no one person or two person or one platform can share everything perfectly. They, they can do a lot of good job out there and everything like that. But when there's information available out there, when there's resources available out there, then be open-minded people. Like, you know, people in IT, be open-minded, share that information. It's not going to hurt you. You're not going to lose your job. You're just going to become better and better and better. I've been doing this throughout my life. And to be honest, the help this folks are the one who made me sysadmin. Here you go. The help this team that were my seniors, by the way, they have been in help and they're still in help this because they like that kind of uh, job. But some of them are my seniors, right? And they said in their reviews that Danish needs to be working as an engineer for us. 
that's exactly what they actually put. And I was not even ready for that job because I was like, man, what are you guys talking? So I got that review with my manager. Manager's like, hey, why don't you apply to these positions? Like you only have it open. And that's, there you go. Just by sharing your knowledge. Now, I wasn't trying to become a, like a person to teach them something. I just say that, look guys, if we are going to deploy a software to these 10 offices and you're going to have to go to each office, why don't we just go for PDQ? Can we do that? Can, can I test it? I've done it. Um, they were a little hesitant in the beginning, but can I show it to you? I showed it to them. Does that, does that make them happy? Now, listen, for past so many years, that helped this client that I have. Now it's client because I work with them. Now they are using that tool for almost five years. Think about it. So that made their life so easy because now when, I, when, I, when it came to review, performance review, they're like, hey, I'm not just talking about that one tool right here, right? After that, think about it, five years worth of you know, information. And then you keep adding, keep adding, keep adding, keep adding, sharing, sharing, sharing information. And then boom, you just, you just it's, it's naturally people are going to start respecting you and they're going to give you that. You know, they, okay, you, Danish, you want to grow in your career. I think you should really go for a network engineer job. You should go for this job. You should go, yeah, there's an opportunity available. Do you want to try it before we hire somebody else? A company is telling you that. A company is coming to you and asking you, I mean, come on. That is where, you feel that you should be sharing information with anybody. It doesn't matter. And, and, and it's not about you just growing in your career. Be open my open your heart and say, is it going to either work for me or not work for me? I don't know. I don't care. But at least these two people are going to be really happy, right? Those people who were working with me. They were extremely happy. And seeing them happy makes me happy. It's something like that. That's my motive of this, what I'm doing in this, in this platform. And I'm very clear. And I'm openly saying that, that yes, my platform will have money involved if you want to invest in your shop. For example, if you want to get labs, I'm not going to give that for free, right? Like I'm not going to give up $400 uh, worth of equipment uh, that I have to pay another company uh, with my partnerships for free. I mean, come on, who does that? So well, that's why I'm also very clear and very straightforward to people that you want to invest in yourself, you invest in yourself. You don't want to invest in yourself, then I have given this whole free uh, worth of information and I spent uh, nine years of my life on YouTube to do this kind of stuff for people. So I'm not trying to gain any, any sympathy or anything. I'm just kind of telling you that like, be open-minded, share it, and don't think in return, you're going to get something. So maybe Femi for you, among my tip is that maybe don't even think about it, right? Like just go with the flow, try to share everything you want to share, but don't try to make a kind of like a blockage for yourself. You, you, you get what I'm saying, right? Right, right. And that's, that's going to make you approach much better, you know? Do you know if there's any online free platforms for practicing networking on virtual machines, not interested in sites where credit cards details are blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like Azure and Microsoft, uh, right? Right. Raisa, yes. Microsoft does offer you that, but Microsoft have turned this off for COVID. Because those virtual platforms that you're using from Microsoft are free. There are people sitting out there and they're actually maintaining it. So now because of this COVID, they're not there anymore. So they shut it down. So maybe come back in future and I'll give you that link. There is a Microsoft platform that they give you for free uh, labs. Uh, and you can just go in there and just practice for one hour, 30 minutes, something like that and learn some more advanced stuff too. And you can, you can do it for free, but it's not available I think at this point. And if it's available, we can actually test it right now because I thought maybe it's not available, but let's see. It's a uh, micro. Yeah, just cloud uh, trying to practice those virtualization stuff. No, no, it's not virtualization. It's actually a free labs that Microsoft provide you directly uh, from, you don't need to register. You, know, you, need, you need to register, but there's no credit card involved in it. I forgot the name of it. I used to use it back in the day. Uh, it's not Azure, by the way. It's not Azure. Um, okay, I'll, I'll talk about, I mean, I'll talk about this later on in the next video. I'm probably gonna lose my focus right now. But I'll talk about it. I'll share that link uh, with you all, okay? Okay, so now you're coming back to IT support troubleshooting Microsoft Office. There you go. So this is, now that you have learned a little bit of basics about Office, Fundamental, Word, now Microsoft is giving you what? Troubleshoot Office download, installation, activation issues, or troubleshoot Office, troubleshoot cloud storage, um, um, troubleshoot Outlook. There you go. I mean, isn't this the, the thing that we always talk about? 
troubleshooting office. There you go. You got it right there. So now that's where you're going to learn about the Microsoft Office stuff. You learn about the operating system level skills. Now you're going into deep application specific skills that we always look for in interview questions. A lot of people say, oh, do you know how to troubleshoot Outlook? Because Outlook is such a big application that everybody's using. Do you know uh, Office? Like, you know, tell me something about the Office applications and what, how much do you know about it? And maybe they will ask you this kind of question. Maybe they'll ask you some specific question about, do you know how to track an email in Office 365 maybe, right? Or maybe they'll just say, Outlook is not receiving an email, so how do you troubleshoot it? So maybe by going into this course, you may learn something, and then you come back to our channels. We have an unorthodox way of teaching, right? We just, hey, sit down here, everybody. Welcome, Steven. Welcome, Femi. Let's talk about Outlook, right? So that's a different method. This is a different method. This is more of a professional sitting out there from Microsoft certified, you know, titled. We are basic people working as an IT professionals and we're sharing your knowledge. Combination of these two skills becomes pretty powerful for you. Okay. After this, a lot of people now start asking about questions about core cloud fundamentals. Like, I want to know about cloud. What is cloud? What is Office 365? Now, this course is not going to be... It's a good introduction, by the way. I think everybody should take it. Even myself, I'm going to go through this course one more time. But I think everybody should take this course. Why? Because if we have to tell you that, hey, let's talk about Azure Active Directory because you're going to get a ticket in Azure Active Directory these days. And we have proven that one of our member landed a job, came back to us. Danish, I didn't learn about Azure, but let me tell you, there are, uh, there are tickets about Azure. So you should add it into your, net, into your training. And I'm like, oh, you know, one second member, third member. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is becoming serious now. So we went back to our training and like, okay, now we're going to call it modern IT support training. Because why are we calling it modern? We are always using Office 365, I don't know if back when, but now we added an Azure Active Directory in there. Just touch up, of course, nothing more advanced, but here's a good fundamental, free fundamental skills that you can learn without investing money in our platform. If you feel like, maybe this may be enough, to be honest. To be honest, this is a lot of stuff. And Steven is sitting here, he has so much knowledge in here. I mean, Steven, what do you think? By even just finishing a whole of this, all these courses, do you think people are going to gain something out of it? What do you think from your perspective? I think so. Um, a lot, I, I mean, it's a good fundamentals course, it looks like. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to go check it out and, and see what it's all about and stuff like that and kind of enroll and, and just see what they say on the, uh, on the Microsoft side. I mean, it's a different perspective. I mean, they may focus a lot more on their Microsoft products and all that yeah. stuff, which they should do that since they work That's for them. the product, right? Right, exactly. And they're so, not going to go off on other on other applications. They're going to stick mostly to the Microsoft model. Anyway, yeah, and which in one sense I think I like that. Why? Because the focus is going to be just you learning about the Microsoft product, which is what we use, right? We cannot deny that. We cannot say. Oh, Microsoft was talking about Outlook, so I'm going to talk about something else. No, that's their product. They're going to talk about their troubleshooting method is going to be what they are suggesting. Maybe that's good troubleshooting methods out there that they're telling, but there could be some troubleshooting methods that they don't want to talk, right? Maybe it's a third-party tool that we want to troubleshoot something out. of. Microsoft will never talk about PDQ right here now. Microsoft will say, oh, just go for SCCM. We got a better tool, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, so far it looks, I mean, it's, it seems like you uh, broke this down pretty well for people and it should be pretty interesting to see what it's all about. I mean, yeah. And now, now what I want to do is just this, like now people are going to be like, okay, I learned about the fundamentals. I learned about the communication. I learned about all that stuff. What do you have now? Now coming back to our platform. See, first I didn't want to go to our platform. Now, what do you have now? Here you go. Still, we're not talking about money here. Take real world training free. Take real world training free again, free. So people should, Remember this term because I'm a lot of people say, Oh, you're talking about money. This course, I'm giving it out. Anybody who is in my live sessions, I'm giving it out. This course, this is it's only nine dollars for videos, by the way. But this course is a combination of labs, different things, but it has so much content that's more realistic and a little bit different approach than Microsoft fundamental. Now, Microsoft, when they talk about roles, they're not going to specifically show you a whole uh, networking done in like two hours. They're not going to do that. They're going to just talk about it. Yeah. Fundamental rules are this, this is what we do. This is what we do. Slide left, slide, right. 
they're not going to go inside the business and just kind of like show you some reality stuff right there. Now, how do you make this super skillful for yourself? I would recommend then once you finish that, come back to the fundamentals of this, or if you finish this fundamental, go back to the fundamental of that. So don't, don't try to get stuck in two, two places right now, unless you are too good at this stuff. You already know what you're doing then. Yeah. But if you're brand new, then pick on one, either pick this area or pick, or pick that area. Okay. Okay. So, so if you come over here and you click on this fundamental course, which, which I'm giving out for free. So if anybody wants to take this course for free, here you go. You just send me an email. And I'm just doing this in month of Ramadan. That's kind of like my giveaway. I'm not going to be doing this after Ramadan, by the way. So if you go there to this one course that I'm talking about, just one fundamental course that we have developed now. So this is how we developed it. Transitioning into IT career. Now, Microsoft is not going to talk about that. Microsoft is not going to talk about a student. Let's talk into student. Let's put, your, put yourself in the student's shoes. Let's put yourself in a person who has no experience. Let's put yourself in a person who's transitioning. For example, Leila is in this chat right now. She's an accountant. She's a proper, she's working properly for accounting. She's transitioning into IT. And then she took all this training and everything. And now she's like totally thinking different. So Microsoft is not going to go to that detail, by the way. And this is where a lot of people go to YouTube. A lot of people go to Google. They have done all that fundamentals from Microsoft here, Udemy, blah, blah, blah. And now there's a big hole. There's a big gap for someone to explain this stuff to you in a more step-by-step -step approach. So maybe relating it to you more, like, let me be in your shoes where you are and let's talk about it. Right? So in this first section, we break it down for you. Okay. The second section. This is where, again, Microsoft is not going to go into details of, for example, it says understanding office networking using a real lab. Now, this is one hour worth of video. But in this, I have created a full lab. So if you click on it, by the way, the first 40 percent of this course is free for anybody. I mean, you don't even have to register. So look at this. The first video says that. Full office IT networking learning. So what am I going to cover in this lab, right? Then the second one is I look at this right here. It says physical connection to network devices. So then I show you, then I show you how physically things are connected. Then after that, and I show you a network engineer job is to configure a router and a switch. Okay. Now, how many of you have done the lab on a virtual machine? How many done have, have you have done the lab on a virtual machine? And you're like thinking, where do I learn about the DNS properly? Where do, where are all these DHCP are configured in a network level like because think about it and we just even just mentioned it microsoft will never talk about a like a networking from cisco right and cisco will never talk about a microsoft server by the way microsoft like for example if we talk about dhcp microsoft, cisco is not going to say that oh yeah by the way we're teaching you networking skills but dhcp the servers uh, are heavily used uh, they don't use um, you know they have not not many people use cisco devices for dhcp type, type of stuff unless it's a very small network then maybe yeah so this is where we teach you that. Okay, network engineer configured that networking and given the IP addresses to the who? System administrator. A system administrator configured a domain controller, DHCP, and now your job started right here. So you see the complete picture has been done for you. Now you might say, Danish, I don't know about this stuff right here. I don't know about DHCP stuff right here. This is too advanced for me. Now in the video, I say is that, hey, don't worry about it. I'm not trying to teach you this stuff. I'm giving you what visualization, visual learning. You saw it. You saw the whole thing getting created. Now, when you go to part five here in this video, everything will make sense to you. Your learning become easier and easier and easier in your life because that's how you've been. That's how we've been learning the real way, right? We go there, we invest like three, four years, and then we get to learn these things. Now, imagine if somebody would have just made a whole visualization from day one for you. How cool would that be? And that's exactly what I'm doing, right? I'm making the whole experience in more of a visual way now. Okay, so now you have transition, infrastructure is done, titles again. I'm going to talk about the way I think about titles. Microsoft will, th uh, will go over the titles the way they think about titles. So send you email as well. Hey, oh, by the way, if I send an email back to you guys, make sure to check your spam folder. I don't know, for some reason, we are not that famous enough or we not a lot of uh, company knows about us. Maybe I'll find some kind of solution for our email because every time we send an email, it goes to somebody's spam. So make sure you go check your spam folder. It's already there. 
Um, I think I already sent it to you to see too. So maybe check your spam folders, guys, too. Make sure you get that uh, in the thing. Uh, mashallah, Danish sending you. Uh, okay, Leila, after going through JSS platform and doing all the hands-on lab work, I feel confident enough to apply for IT jobs. This is coming from someone who had no IT knowledge. And that's what Leila is a member, actually. Um, but Leila did, did took a live training, but I want to clear that confusion. She, she's not a free member. So if you come over here, and then, of course, summary of mixed infrastructure, what is currently happening? You could be learning from someone who's teaching you that, okay, let's talk about TCP IP. Let's talk about A+. But who's going to tell you about the, the current technology? What, what about the hybrid world that we are on right now? We have an on-premises sector directory, and we have things happening in Azure, Amazon. Who's going to tell you about all this stuff? And when you land a job, is, isn't it going to be a shocker for you? Now, it's natural shocking, which is fine. People may say, why are you even teaching this stuff? Let people learn on their own. This is the stuff that they should be learning on their own because that's like you are going out there and you're basically you're basically learning this so you will become better that way. And I totally disagree with that. Technology is moving so fast. And if I'm a, a slow learner like that, if I have to learn it that way, then I'm just telling a person, waste your time. I'm just not sharing my skills with you, right? Now, here's an example. When, a people, when people land a job in a company, why do they learn so quickly from another technician? The other technician is doing exactly what I'm doing, but as the technician don't have time to create a whole LMS for you, the other technician don't have a time to sit down and, and teach you everything from scratch. The other technician don't have a time to sit with you and now explain theoretical stuff with you. They're not going to do that. So you're going to learn over there with stress. You're going to learn over here without stress. Are you going to get the stress out of your job? 100%. But it's natural stress. It's a good stress. You feel it. You knew it was coming. You knew my mentor told me that get ready for this stress. It's coming. You're not just getting hit by it. Or you're not going to run away from it. You're not going to think that I'm going to give up. Those are the things that I'm targeting in my career, in my platform. I don't care about the rest of the stuff, to be honest. And my platform is designed for this kind of stuff. I want to make sure someone gets out of this platform and say, wow, I'm not stressed anymore. I'm actually happy, but I know what's coming. So I'm going to ready and I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to fight that battle. It's going to like that, right? Rather than just use landing a job and boom, you just get hit. Okay. So I agree. I'm, a, I'm also a member. So Hi-Fi is also a member. I got a lot of members sitting here today. Nice. Okay. So, all right. Now, now, now we have cleared that. Now here's the biggest area of your life. Like, okay, now we've talked about this confusion, everything and everything, but mental preparation for skills is extremely important. And I struggled in this area for a long, long time. Mentally, I was not prepared for a long time. And then I realized that, man, this is all, most of this stuff is very much mental, right? So if you're not mentally accepting that this is going to take you time, if you're not mentally accepting that the mentorship is better than no mentorship, if you're not accepting that there's a free content available that I'm, I'm going to utilize it, I'm not going to utilize it because I don't believe in it. Uh, if you have that kind of mentality, then trust me, you're going to be wasting quite a good, of, good, good amount of your lifetime in IT career. That's how it is. This is a reality. It's all about me saying that someone is providing it to you. You either take it or you don't take it. You take it, you become smart, you learn more. You don't take it, you go on your own way. You maybe even build your own solutions. Perfect, great examples. Do it on your own, no problem. But this is what I'm talking about. Mental preparation is the key. And when I start my training, the first thing that I do, I say, are you mentally prepared? Did you want it to be this person? Have you watched my fundamental? Did you went through all these different type of real world uh, uh, tickets? Do you really want to do that? Yes, yes, I want to do that. That's exactly what I want to do. And I would have maybe one more, one more or two person done. People said, no, 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 no. I don't want to be helped this. I want to be a sysadmin directly. I'm like, no, you cannot become a sysadmin directly like that. But do you want to become a sysadmin directly? Then here you go, pay that premium membership and I'll give you the labs. Do it yourself, but you will fail. But if they pass, they come back to me, Danish, I did it. And I'm like, hey man, you just did something that was pretty awesome. I thought you were going to fail, but you did it. There you go. Congratulations. Right? <laughs> so that is exactly how I deal with these type of questions. Uh, yo, Dan, 
I'm still waiting for you to send uh, the foundation course I emailed you. Raldo, if I didn't send it to you, uh, then check. I might have sent it to you. Check your spam emails. If not there, then I will have to check my email. I have a bunch of requests right now, so maybe I might have missed people. But people who are watching me, if I have not sent it to you, just uh, hold on it. You send me the email. I'll send it to you. But make sure you check your junk or spam email. Come on. This is IT stuff. You guys should know how to get to junk. Yeah, Danny. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is for you and Steven again. Um, I, it's something that is a question of X, um, uh, Kev as well, but I just wanted your honest opinion as well. Um, uh, for a while now, I've also been delving into, at least on the side while studying into, um, the Mac OS essentials, uh, version 15, uh, to try to at least get myself up to uh, grasp with, um, everything. I mean, at least the basics, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I can go, everything Mac. Um, I, I'm a user that's only used Mac for like a year, sometime 2015 or thereabout. But then it was just to get a feel of it better than I ever did in my life. And beyond that, I've not necessarily done anything with Mac uh, in terms of using it, talk less of um, even troubleshooting. But uh, I've bec lately I've become a lot more interested not just because um, not because I'm trying to be a master of all, which is definitely impossible. I'm not. It's not, it's not even there. But just I mean, along the line of saying things that you've mentioned, and I believe Stephen has mentioned, and Kev as well from time to time. I mean, because at some point, I mean, everything com does come together as I'm beginning to realize in terms of yeah, I'm not going to know everything, but at least um, every little knowledge or thereabout that I'm able to garner here would probably come in handy. Because where I work, for example, right now. Mm -hmm. There's times when we do have the executives, they're the only ones that, and the marketing department, for example, for, I mean, for obvious reasons, they use um, the Mac, mm -hmm. but they, uh, they, they, we do have the executive guys that deal with the executive support, but the guys in, um, say, uh, the marketing department were basically right next door to us, mm -hmm. come from time to time, and there's only like a handful of the guys um, on the front end before it gets to the executive guys that mm -hmm. are, have um, at least a decent knowledge of the Mac. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm the kind of person when I'm doing something. Yes, I, again, I know that I'll, I'll probably not be able to know everything, uh -huh. but I kind of feel embarrassed uh that you know what? No. Nah, uh -uh. So I'm trying to like, <laughs> in my own little way, rectify that part of it. So uh -huh. I just wanted to know what your app you delve into or you believe one should delve into. Okay. Um, learning uh, about the Mac, just to add on your uh, thing, um, LinkedIn, uh, I don't know, do you have a LinkedIn premium or do you have a normal LinkedIn profile? I, 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 I have a regular one, yeah. Okay. So basically, when you, if you want to learn about Mac um, at that level, LinkedIn premium, <clears throat> which is basically, I think, uh, it's Linda, Lydia, I don't know, I forgot their name. This was, a, this was acquired by LinkedIn. A year or two years ago <clears throat> for a few million dollars i think it was a linda or linda.com i think there's a very big site out there so they have a very kind of extensive mac learning learning path out there so they they can they have like a nice courses about mac right now just like what we are teaching they have like a full flow of mac learning mac specialist or something like that right now you're totally right that even for most of these normal co companies like nonprofits and stuff like that you know what are the graphics people use mostly? The graphic department. We call it graphics or graphic department. What, are they, what, what do they use? Macs, right? Most of them uh, in these companies. Uh, so learning about Mac is not going to hurt you. But learning about landing a job in interviews for most of these jobs, Mac is not going to help you too much to just like that. That's going to be the key right there. Oh, my God. You don't know about Mac. We're not going to give you a job, Right. So I want to clear that to a lot of people that if they're going for these courses and they're going learning about these things, maybe learn it, maybe learn the basics of it, but don't think you're going to become a specialist in them. What you're just saying that yourself too, like you're not going to become a specialist on anything. Me, me neither. Even though I'm teaching these fundamentals, I'm still not a specialist about these things, right? So the thing about this is that you learn it. The only, the only thing that you want to be more focusing on is what's going to help you land a job in the beginning. So that's the focus I'm talking about. So when I say, don't lose the focus in the beginning is when your target is learning the skills, but at the same time, you're learning, you're using, utilizing these skills to actually land the job. Does that make sense? And then yeah. you, once you land a job, then you have time, you have money, you have proper 
place you they may be pay, paying for you you let the company pay for the stuff for you right and then you become better and better and better specifically in the area where you want to go so tomorrow if you want to become a mac specialist right then you would invest more time into the mac area maybe that's your route then but a lot of people in it it's very unheard of or not common that they're going to go towards from help this side to Mac side, and they're going to become like a Mac specialist, right? So very few right. can can do that because a normal process is like they become a sysadmin, network engineer, security administrators, and that's where Mac is almost like, yeah, you need to know about security and stuff, but that doesn't become, you don't become that that level of, you know, what I'm like, what I'm saying is like, you're going to go to indeed.com, you're not going to see many positions that says Mac systems administrator, very few, right? But you're going to see a system administrator with, Microsoft and other technologies, huge amount of them, right? So it's like, a, it's, it's the approach, like what you want to do. Welcome, Manasi. Uh, yeah, with the, you know, with the Mac ecosystem, I mean, it, I've been, you know, kind of doing this stuff since 2010. I think I've worked on a Mac zero times in that 10 years. I've never seen one in a business. I mean, unless you go into like a printing outfit with graphics, like, you know, you said, then you got to focus more on the Mac. But I mean, I think the reason why companies don't go with Macs is because once you are a Mac person, you got to follow the Mac rules. You got to buy their applications, their hardware, everything comes through Apple and companies don't want to do it because it's very, very expensive. I mean, they have you over a barrel. You have to do everything by their rules. And the PC is a lot more flexibility. You can put Windows on, you can put whatever on, you can put you in different hard drives, different video cards, change out motherboards. If something goes wrong, you gotta call on the Mac guys, which is probably a lot of money, you know? And it's, I mean, you see, I, I'm terrible with Macs. If I get one in front of me, I'm like, where is the C drive? Oh yeah, it's this thing right here. I'm like, oh, then you got to flip your mind around. Oh, okay. That's just like Windows C drive. Okay. How do you get to the video card settings? How, what is, I, I would have no clue. I play around with it in my life, maybe 10 hours tops. Other than that, I am clueless. I am, sit me down in front of a Mac. I have no clue. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, how do you, you know, I can turn it on. Uh, log in. I guess you log in the same way. Um, you know, but some guys love them, you know, some guys, oh, they die with Mac. I, I don't like them. I'm like, okay, fine. You, you, you know, die with it, you know, but that's not going to make you money. I mean, the money is PC and the money is Microsoft. And that's what, you, you know, you have to, that's why all this training is out there. It's all geared towards the Microsoft ecosystem. It's not geared towards Macs. I mean, it's very, you so, very pockets of people. So, so like, like I said, it's, it's, it's the way what you're going to apply to. So most of the time when you use a desktop support technician, held up, held the support stuff, stuff titles like that is towards Microsoft. Even though, look at this. I just went in there and say, IT support technician in Baltimore level two. This is an advanced position, by the way. It's not level one. It specifically tell you level two. And it tells you, Three years of experience. Now, experience is always something that you can you can uh, fight. That's not a problem, right? You can always fight that. But here you go. Look at this, uh, Femi. Experience with Mac OS, Windows OS. Now, here's the thing. I can guarantee you that 90% of their resume, people are going to have this type of experience, what, what just Steven just said. And people are going to have a little bit touch up on the Macs. That doesn't mean you need to know about Macs. So you go in there. You talk talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty good at this stuff. Da, 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 da. They're like, oh, yeah, we have Mac, by the way, too. Do you know anything? Yeah, I know the basics. Oh, yeah, no problem. We have documentation. We have the other technician. We have a flow. We have designed this specific methods, and we're going to teach you that. No problem. That's how it, it's done. And that's where a newbie will take this as in like a stoppage, what I'm saying. Maybe you and I and Steven are good now. We can understand that ah, that's just a, they're just a wish list, right? So if this was just level one right here, and this was just saying the same stuff and maybe two years of experience, I would recommend someone who have finished all these courses, go shoot out your resume. Like I said, 10 companies out of 10 companies, eight will reject you. And that's lovely. Let them reject you. You know, feel the rejection. Two might accept you. So there you go.
this is always how it works in IT. 10 out of 10 will never have the same answer for you. Out of these 10 people, majority of them will reject you as a level because you're new, you're brand new. You got more competition now. We are in 2020 people. People, everybody's changing their uh, their their uh, their uh, careers to IT now. We got a Layla sitting here as an accountant. We got Haifa customer service something. Some other people coming from different areas now. So the competition is great these days, but if you do it smartly, you're targeted better, you sell yourself better with these courses, with these suggestions, with these advices, then none of this matters. None of this matters. I can tell you this from- You know, you know too, a lot of things I see a lot about these, uh, these postings now uh, is when you look at them, they're very outdated. They, they just must post the old ones from like five or 10 years ago. You see stuff in there, like you some, sometimes you see Windows XP. Sometimes you see like Windows Server 2003. It's like, do they even read these things before they throw them back up there? Because um, it doesn't make sense. Some of them, I'm like, well, okay, your technologies are, are so advanced. And people are not, are not running Windows XP anymore. They're not even running Windows 7. Like Windows, there's nothing about Windows 10 on some of these things. So it seems like the HR department, I don't know what they do and how they just say, oh yeah, just pull this one out from five years ago. Okay, just repost the actual job. Yeah. So when you read it, you have to really read between the lines like, oh, they want a Windows XP guy? Like what? Like it doesn't make any sense. And it's, it's kind of scary that you know, the company puts out something like it, you figure somebody would proofread it going, yeah, why are we putting on an XP stuff? We, we, you know, that was like five, ten, you know, seven years ago, we even had that in our environment. You know what I mean? So it's very interesting to read some of those. Sometimes it's just, I just get a kick out of reading some of these things. Like nobody even looks at it, you know? It's interesting I, sometimes. I, I totally agree with you. But look at this, uh, most of these, like I have, so for this stuff, I'm going to take you all to one of my course, by the way, this is not something very simple that people are going to get, get it and understand it, or they're just going to take it, take my wording right now. So a lot of times this is the leniency. I call this a lenient area for people that I'm going to go lenient on this kind of stuff. I'm just going to put or in there. So this or is a big thing for most of the people who are new. You will not have two years of experience guaranteed, right? Your first time applying for these jobs, you're not going to have that experience. Then it says like experience or work experience, or they will put something like that. Now, a, a newbie who just comes out of the college cannot even defend this, by the way. They don't even have this defense. They don't have this defense. So a new person who, who comes out of college comes with A plus certifications, no defense at all. Nobody told them that you can do these kind of things. So a new person, a new professor, sorry, new college graduate or anybody who does this certification level of training, look at this description and immediately they get disappointed. Uh, it says tier one and it's asking for two years of experience. What the hell is wrong with these people? So that's where, that's where there's, a, there's this idea behind this, that if you can learn the courses that we are telling you to learn or the teaching that we're doing with you, then you're selling yourself a little bit differently. You're going out there, you're talking about Active Directory ticketing system that you never heard of before. Now you know about it, right? So you go in there, you represent yourself to a person that look, I am not just a graduate. I'm a little better than that, right? So give me an opportunity. I think you guys are looking for experience. I think I got that covered too. It's just about matter of me, how I learn it. This is where I'm learning it. These are my courses. These are blah, 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 blah. I'm talking at your directory questions. You, 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 talk, you talk about at your directory. You talk about Office 365. You're impressing them. You're impressing them. And boom, they say like, man, this person deserves a chance. They, this is what I'm talking about. Out of 10 people, like I said, eight people will still reject you. Take that mental. Remember that was mental thing before? So now going back to my mental part of it again, that's the mentality that I'm talking about, okay? You know, I think that might be a good video for you to make there, Donish, is um, breaking down some of these things you see on these postings as far as the worrying up top, help desk technician. What exactly does that mean? What, and then some of them say help desk and, you know, analyst or something like that, or just help desk, you know, kind of like break that down for people that are new. And even for myself, really, I mean, this stuff would be because you have a lot more, you know, knowledge with this stuff. I'll show as you. Far as, um Steven, I have already done this in my career, IT career question. So here's how I've done it. I mean, you're going to like this. Look at this right here. Can I start an IT career as a system administrator? Applied for integrity. Uh, sorry, here. So you see, 
how can I entry level? Uh, here you go. Learn security plus. Do I need a plus? I became network engineer, the real networking. Can I become an IT manager without experience? So I have done this in these. Like for example, if somebody follow my IT career playlist in YouTube from video one to the last video, they're going to learn every single thing that I'm just talking about today. And I open, actually open up a whole uh, description and I talk about description one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. So for, for example, here, like I say, help this, in, uh, help this interview coming, no need to worry. That's, that's a different thing, actually. So here's, um, am I ready to start an entry-level help desk job? And if I look at this right now, if I open it to you, Stephen, I'm actually uh, on the same. Where is that? I didn't open here. All right, add. I cannot click on my ad to make money, right? So here you go, Steven. Uh, and my son is there too. <laughs> so here, I'm talking about every single thing, all these descriptions that you're talking about, Steven. Every single thing by detail, by detail, by detail, by detail. And then I made a next video for a sysadmin call for security one, for this one, for that one. And it's like a huge list out there. And I think people should really, really uh, watch this list. It's really gonna help them. Uh, I'm gonna put it in this chat, by the way. There you go. So it's done, but maybe this is a big list. It's gonna confuse people a little bit more, Stephen. So I would recommend this, by the way. So remember, I was going through all of this stuff. So of course, after this, they're gonna learn about core fundamentals in this course. Mm -hmm. And then this is where money start to talk, right? And that's where I say that, hey, you either pay to do these labs and this 200 plus courses, and I work on it, I research, I do all these things for you. So of course, people have to become premium members for it. But if people want to just get to my course, this course, and learn all of these technical videos, by the way, you have VirtualBox running, and you want to come down here, you want to learn about command line on your VirtualBox, and you want to get into this course for free, then send me an email for free in this month. If after this month, just at least pay $9, it's not much, to be honest, even less than a lunch these days. So go and get that $9 and get into this course and just get the videos. If you have money, go for the premium membership. If you have more money, then get for mentorship, guidance, training, just like what I did with Leila and Haifa who are in this chat right now. So that's kind of like, that's where you're going to really, really get a hold of technology, by the way. Because Microsoft has shown their stuff, I've shown my stuff in non-Microsoft way, meaning I'm not a Microsoft product here. I am basically who I am and I'm gonna be teaching everything that I think is the best for your career. Okay, so now coming down right here, this is where skills become more advanced for free one. This is still the free version going on right now. This course is my old course and I, the skills basically are the same. So if you go to this course, it's a hundred plus hour course. You're gonna learn some techniques, troubleshooting techniques that Microsoft is not gonna talk about, but I'm gonna talk about because I'm using a third party tool and Microsoft is not okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't care. I'm, I'm, at the, I'm working at the job. They're okay with that. If they're not okay with that, at least you know the mentality. You know about how troubleshooting works. Ask them what kind of tools they use. They'll give it to you. Then ticketing system, Active Directory, Office 365. And this is where Steve and I wanted to tell people that if somebody wants to land a job, and you want to interview questions, you want the answers, you want the flow, you want to indeed.com interview questions, you want something that I've researched, then take this free course. In this course, I talk about bad resume versus a good resume. In this talk about, I talk about experience versus no experience. There you go, this is your course right here. In this list, and I'm gonna share this in the chat as well. In this list then, oh, wrong. There you go, fix the, fix the link right here. The, the first link was uh, not good. Let me, let me remove it. So in this link, to be honest, from this link, everything is kind of like flow, right? You're going through the flow. You either started there or you started here, right? So both way can work. You started from step one from our course, finished it. You may even land a job. People have done. People have landed a job. Some people have not landed a job. Some people then went for uh, more other free stuff. Some people went for, for paid stuff, reality, right? And still they didn't land a job. Some people have finished or paid stuff, still didn't land it. Because I'm not promoting landing a jobs over here. I'm not giving you a job, I'm giving you skills. So my platform is not about me giving you a job, right? That's not gonna happen. I don't have that ability. What I have ability is to give you resources and I'm giving you that. So you're gonna be satisfied with that, okay? 
Now coming down, then of course we are in collaboration. We have friends like Steven, we have Captech, we have Kubuman. These are the people they are doing their own way. They have developed this whole skills the way they have learned. Now imagine when you learn something in more of a format, you open up your mind, you're ready, you're mentally ready, you're prepared, you understand technology, you understand Active Directory, you understand how networking is working. And now you get come across of these channels like Kubuman, like these are the different playlists that I have, but let's say Captech. Desktop support skills about 84 videos. Come on, I mean, how can you miss this, right? 84 videos in just one playlist. Then level one support from, from phone support then uh, support at work. Now this is like a topping. It's like a, you're totally just like, a, what, do you, what do you call the, those terms, Steve? I don't know, the cream of the top. I don't know what that is. Uh, cherry on the top. Cherry on cherry the top. top. Cherry on top. Yeah. So cherry on the top is like right here. People. Okay. So you finish this, all of this stuff. Honestly, I think you're going to spend this much money, zero dollars to learn these types of skills. And I can guarantee you on internet so far, you will not find a combination of skills like this anywhere on internet. I mean, I'm not gonna make it sound like there's nowhere, but search it and show it to me. I, will, I would love to see it. Compare this with Udemy courses. Bring the Udemy courses. What you just said. What's that, sorry? I can confirm 120% what you just said <laughs> to be true. Well, internet is pretty big, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say this is the ultimate, but to be my because I'm a researcher myself, like I research in this area, and I do extensive researching by searching different methods of searching, and I like to look at new stuff because if somebody have a good stuff, I like to share just like what I shared in the beginning. But people are not gonna find anything like this, you know. So then I will challenge people to okay. Some people say, why don't I just go to Udemy and just pay like $9 for those courses. Those one courses are three hour, two hour, one hour, and you're paying $9, multiply that with, let's say you're taking 15 help desk courses and they're teaching the same stuff. Some of the stuff don't have anything to do with technical stuff and you spend about, let's say $300, right? And I'm not saying you're not gonna learn anything. You're gonna learn everything, but $300, what's $0 is a huge difference right here. Zero, $300. Investment of time, investment of energy, proper way of turning. There's, there's a big difference in this. And that's where when people say, okay, then why are you charging? Well, very simple answer. I am a partner with platforms that are not for free. And the platforms that is like Practice Lab, which is a huge platform, testout.com, I'm a partner with them. So I bring their solution to my members without them going specifically for different type of uh, platforms. So they don't, they don't have to register to 10 different platforms to get guidance. So I am the guidance, I'm the mentorship, and then I bring the labs for them. This becomes more realistic. This becomes more approachable. This becomes more practical. And now a person is involved in more technical stuff. If somebody wants to become a network engineer, then I'm going to say, hey, you need to follow this, 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 this. If you want to become a, uh, a sysadmin, then okay, you have you done all the theoretical stuff? Have you finished all these courses? Let me show you. You need to come over here to 2016 server. You need to finish these three courses right here. Okay, what's your next query? Okay, I want to learn about this stuff, that stuff. And then some stuff we will be able to provide, some we cannot provide. Does that make sense? I can't wait to share, share my success story when I land an IT job. 100%, we are gonna make you land a job because you're in it, you're dedicated. I talked to you on the phone, you're very passionate about you. You want you don't wanna give up, Leila. And I, I, I believe whoever have done that, they are in our YouTube channel and they are their stories are here, like uh, Gustavo and there's so many other ones, like you know, person working in Best Buy and he's now somewhere else uh, in IT. So. This is the whole story about skills learning. I hope I answered my question to people who are watching my video, like the latest video. I just watched one video and somebody posted a, a question. How do I learn the skills on after the virtual box setup? Now, virtual box setup is not it. You can see this whole free content is going to take you easily about two to three months, by the way. It's not a, it's, you cannot do this in one week. You cannot do this in two weeks unless you're too good. I don't know. If you're like me, slow learner, two, three months. Three months is good enough. More than that, you're doing something wrong, I believe, you should contact me. And you should tell me where you're stuck because then maybe you're either losing the track or you're not following something correctly. So 
I hope this helped people uh, without me sharing too much of paid stuff. Paid is there, there's no match for it, but free is, is too good uh, compared to other stuff. So if anybody have a question, just let me know. Uh, we can just probably chit chat for now for a little bit. I'm just gonna take a little break. So Steven, what's your next goal, bro? How, how's, uh, how, many, how many places have you applied so far? Well, with the with the, all, all this COVID stuff going on, there's there isn't too much around here. Even if you check up, you know, you you know, you punch in, you know, the the Allentown area and and online here, there's not too much stuff out there, like on you know Indeed and all that, because everything is all still shut down for us. So the companies, it's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to bring people back. Um, and with me being in, you know, uh, let go from the other job from the hospital. How are they going to start up their projects again? How are they going to bring people back? That's, you know, they have to start them up at some point. And we just found out the other day that, well, St. Luke's is going to be starting elective surgeries again. So that's going to bring in some more revenue because that's where they make their money. You know what I mean? You know, hospitals, that's how they make their money. When they make their money, it's always, you know, one day operations. Mm. And they had to shut all that stuff down. Oh, wow. So now they're going to be putting it back into play. So you know, that's going to take time to pan out how they're going to adjust all that. And I imagine they're, they will hopefully start calling some people back, starting yeah. their projects. My, my idea on this is that just like we are panicked, right? Like everybody's panicked. They're, they're not, things are like very much uh, not designed the way we're doing things right now, right? Most of the companies. So think about HR manager, right? HR manager, is not used to this kind of stuff. So how many things are they involved in that they were not used to? So their priorities right now is going kind of like hiring a person to less now. Now, here's the thing. How many companies have talked about limiting their resources, meaning not spending more money? Yeah. So they would want to stop on hiring more people because that was supposed to be more of like an extra help, right? For, for a team. So now they're asking their team members like, Hey, where can we save our money? Uh, I think we don't need a new person. I think I can do the double, double work. Don't worry. I'll do it. I'll do it. Right. But once this is over, Steven, once this is over, but there are many companies that were not posting the jobs out there, right? These are going to go out there, these people, and then, and uh, help these people are going to say, we got burned out. We worked more than what we supposed to, because I can guarantee you on the company that one of the company that I know 350 people, to help those people and they are burned out because they have to create an equipment for people. They have to send an equipment for people. They have to do a lot of stuff for people and man, they are burned out. So now they're thinking how can make, they don't want to lose them. Of course, they'll be like, oh man, this is, this is a crazy place, right? right? So when they go back, they're already starting to talk about, hey, what can we do to make this thing easy? So some people are even <laughs> suggesting when we get back, when everything is normal, I think we need to expand our IT team. You know, also too, I mean, what is level two desktop support could be like when people go back because it's face to face, you know, and yeah, people will get tested until they have a, some kind of, you know, um, immunization, you know, and some kind of, you know, stuff we can take or give, you know, they can give to us to make everybody safe again. I mean, what's, how's that going to change our, and our companies, our companies going to hire it's like for that kind of position while well, the people are there. You know, then they want me. They maybe they won't bring in any kind of contractors or anything like that. So it's like, why should we ex maybe expose them until there is a cure for this thing? You know, so that's gonna be very interesting too. I'm sure they're probably rethinking a lot of the IT stuff. Maybe they're maybe they're even thinking right now, well, hey, let's just all go to the cloud. So that's gonna really take away a well, lot. Of, a, a lot of a, a lot of a, a lot of things are gonna go to cloud, but then people will be mistaken if they think that there's not going to be work in the cloud. Like they're going to be going to the cloud. And then let's say, for example, somebody was running a local exchange servers or some kind of local, another email system, they were highly thinking right now, okay, let's go to Microsoft Office 365. This was just a painting. So who is uh, managing Office 365 heavily these days? Help us, right? These are the help us people, licensing, adding people, adding groups. And that's just help us straight up, right? Now, there may be other people doing other stuff in Office 365, but Honestly, that basic stuff has helped us. Okay, Azure Active Directory was supposed to be a sysadmin job, but now that we have implemented Azure, I'm not going to sit there and add users every day, right? 
or I'm not going to sit there and doing uh, group permissions every day in Azure. Are you ready? Who's doing it? Who's going to do that? Help this. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, it's going to go to more cloud, but it's going to create more opportunities. And I have a different take on this. Uh, basically, a help desk title level one is not a not known to be making a lot of money in any market, right? It's just level one position and people will pay you a certain amount of money, right? Based on where you live, especially in a DMV area, people can say, I can make to maximum, let's say 55K or 60 would be maximum. Well, right? in the Pennsylvania area here, I mean, we're talking uh, 35 to $40,000. Yes. And, and even in DC, in Maryland, you can, you will land a job at 35K. I'm just saying the max 35 to 55 is around the market max kind of stuff, right? But if more of the technology goes to cloud, then what happens is this in future, that people are going to start thinking about help this a little bit different than, or maybe give them a little bit different titles. So cloud is already making more money, by the way. If somebody becomes a cloud engineer, they're not going in their low end, by the way. They're, they're making 70 up almost like that. Look for any cloud engineer job. They're making more than 70K. Right? So the more help this, the more skills gets transformed to this cloud, the more respect will be created for this position because now they're saying, hey, they're doing a lot of cloud work. Let's do the market reevaluation. That they do that, right? Most of the people do that. Most of the bigger companies, most of the most of the even the good companies that want to be in the market, they don't want to lose their people, they do evaluation like that. And they will come back and say, Okay, you know, this year we have expanded added $5,000 more because we have added more of these skills. Because if you don't do that, I help this person will start thinking, man, I got this whole stuff right here on on-premises. I got this cloud stuff going on. How many things am I going to do, right? This becomes a problem later on. And, and the more you have people like that, the more people are going to use it, the more pressure is going to be building on the managers and IT directors. And then they'll have to do that. They'll have to change. It. So that's for future, by the way. But Cloud is going to be always a good thing for people to learn now. I mean, why why not accept this reality than being a person who doesn't want to accept it and just one day find out that, hey, we are moving to Office 365. Everything that you are doing is no longer required. You either need to learn it or you need to go, right? <coughs> so, so, I mean, you cannot tell a person that I was an expert in XP, but I'm not going to learn about Windows 10. They don't care. Like you were an expert in XP and you don't want to learn about Windows 10 because you don't want to, right? Because we have some people with that mentality that I'm not going to learn about cloud now. Uh, but I'm not saying to people to, to just go and become an Azure cloud specialist. You are totally lose your track. If you want to become a help desk and you do this thing, again, in the beginning, I said, you'll lose your track. When you, lo when you lose your track, you become stressful. When you become stressful, you lose your career and you lose interest. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I mean, it's also going to be interesting too. like I said, when the projects open up, because when I talk to the people that call me during the week, you know, all these, uh, uh, all these recruiters and stuff like that, they all call and they're, they're like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm like, they may say a job, you know, Hey, you know, do you want to drive like 45 minutes away to make like $18 an hour to do like for a month? I'm like, uh, no, not really. I'm not going to waste my gas for $18 an hour. You know what I mean? It's like, why should I do that for and I said, do you have anything else? He goes, and you know, the people go, no, the boards are really, really dead right now. And I'm like, and I even say to them, I said, just wait, once this is done, you guys are going to be calling people left and right because companies are just going to be panic mode because it's getting close to the end of the year. And they, they're going to, all those projects are just going to start flowing in and they're going to need people. She's like, let yeah, me, you're right. Let me, I'm like, let, me, you, let, me, let me act it out. How many companies have bought laptops on the fly right now? For the refreshes. Oh my God. Or, so well, many companies, so many yeah. companies have bought laptops for almost every single staff members. Those laptops has to come back now. Who's going to support these laptops? Well, that's true too. Um, Think about it. Think about it. I mean, and if it's, if it's going to go out now, if this culture is going to start about the remote working now, if yeah. the culture is about remote working will start, right. then this adds a whole new level of support to be honest because we were not used to supporting people's network or you have a slow network so bam that's not my problem thank you so much fix it 
right? I'm not going to come to your network, fix it for you. I'm not going to come and fix your uh, local laptop. This was an issue back in the days, right? When everybody was like, IT is everything. IT will do everything for us, right? Then people start finding out, man, we cannot function like this. We, we got to put some rules out there, policies, right? So this is getting a little bit backward now. Think about it. Laptops are going to go back. People are going to start using it. People are going to start using a lot of remote support. And now, bam, you got this old new skills that are going to be, be, be uh, required. And they have to then hire people to do these kind of things, to be honest. Some of the technical people may not be used to this kind of stuff. So maybe companies might not want to lose these people because they're too good. They may just say, you guys do certain part and we're going to hire another person who's going to do certain part. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you will see so many new jobs that are going to come up, to be honest. Once this thing is over, I tell people to be ready. Be ready. It's going to come. Yeah. Let me answer one other question here. I'm, I'm ready. I'm already working in a sales for an IT company, but I want to be more involved with the IT stuff. But they told, but they told help this will be the easiest transition, but I have a strong accent and I don't, I don't, I will be um, I'm able to, able to be on the phone, helping people with their computers because most of the people don't quite understand my English. Well, you, you know, your problem, Kevin, What's your problem? Let's be real. What's your problem? Your problem is accent. You think your English is not good. So what do you do? What do you do to fix that problem? You go outside, find some type of platform where you can be connected with somebody live. Let them fix your English. I am coming from Pakistan, right? I'm from Pakistan. When I came from Pakistan, my first job was a bus boy. I told the story. I could not talk to people. I knew English, but I could not speak verbally with somebody like Stephen. Stephen, to me, when if I look at him, when I came from Pakistan, in Pakistan, everybody's this skin color, or maybe a little bit lightish, right? So culture, racial, everything, every shock came in me right now. Shock, 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 shock. To me, when I looked at Stephen I, at that time, so he's a white person. I don't know what he's going to think about when I open my mouth. Think about that level of stress. Right, right, Stephen? Or... Yeah. Femi, whatever color, any color, I was totally destroyed in that that time because I could not perform anything. I just clean the table, finish my job, blah, 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 and go home. Come back, blah, 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 clean the table, go home. Come back, and I, I was doing this every single day of my life. And I'm looking at the people left and right. I'm like, wow, my life just totally flipped. Because in Pakistan, I had friends. I was enjoying my life. I was young. I was had my own community kind of friend. That's nothing is there anymore. So imagine if that kind of struggle, I'm just giving you my story just to motivate you that your struggle is almost fixable. This is not something that you cannot fix. Then I can, I can share my whole, my life story, to be honest, I'm not getting any sympathy or anything, but then I, one of, one of my accident is like, I broke my collar, my C4 and T5, which is your spine. I broke it motorcycle accident. And I totally lost hope in everything. But when you have hope, the last thing is that, you know, it works. It takes time. Nothing will happen immediately. So if you think that you have an English problem, go find and seek something that can fix your English. You don't need to become a master. Still to this day, my grammar sucks. I send an email and I do my mistakes. Probably Stephen have noticed it too in my emails. Notice it. I'll send an email and there will be mistakes. I, I like sucks too. So, <laughs> so we're right so, there. So that shouldn't, that shouldn't stop you. Yeah. You need to fix what, what you need to fix is this. You need to learn skills, by the way. <laughs> what I have shared with you, if you learn this, you have confidence then. Confidence takes over that, that issue. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, can, I, can I just speak to this as well? Yes. Now, um, even with those of us, because uh, you might notice sometimes I kind of stumble. And reason being that, um, yes, I come from um, a background of English speaking in addition to some other I mean, languages on the site. But even with those of us that were, I mean, call it original equipment manufacturing manufacturer, um, I still struggle when I first moved to New York City because it wasn't even about whether I could speak or not. And I'm I'm a pretty I'm even better writing than even I mean, so it, it still didn't matter. Now, um what I found out was that you and you already spoke to part of it now. If you really um develop yourself to the point where Yes, you might not be that fluent or whatever, but you develop yourself to the point where, I mean, they could see that, man, this guy's good. I've seen a lot of situations where, despite the biases that people might have, 
your work is going to speak for you. It don't even matter. Because I work with someone that like that right now. The guy's so good that almost nobody even bothers about his English. And I mean, I'm not saying it's the best, but it's not exactly the worst. Now, I also have a guy about previous job. He's from Afghanistan. And I look at this guy sometimes. He tells, I can understand what this guy is saying. But then he keeps complaining to me about how people tell him, oh, what are you saying and all of that. And this guy is so technical, super technically good that there was a day I took it so personal with him. I'm like, dude, you you told me you have all the certifications that even without all the certifications or whatever, I know you're this good. Where's your whatever? Like, let's go do some resume. That was how personal I took this. And his answer to me was, oh, they're, they're still back at my certifications or whatever in Afghanistan or whatever. I'm like, okay, you know what? You know something I realized? You don't even need the certifications if that if that's what you're still waiting for. You're good. Let's get you to apply for I know if, if it means me, and this is one thing with me. I think things are personal to that point. If it means me following up with you, even up until the point of making sure you go for at least one interview, I'll go with you, even if I'm not going inside with you. Because mm-hmm. that's how good this guy was. And if you remember yesterday, if you notice it, one thing I realized. Um, yesterday I mentioned this to, uh, when we had this, uh, chat, uh, with, um, Keftex, um, what's it called? And it was to the effect that even with me, I'm not going to lie to you. I can be very laid back sometimes. If I, one thing I noticed with him, human beings, a lot of times is we always seem to look for excuses for why we can't do something or, I, because just like you said, he had another, he has another friend. He, will, he, he only could speak barely passable English. That's the same guy I'm talking about. And he always came up with this, and he was pretty good as well. He always came up with this issue about how he couldn't speak English. And I'm like, you know what? Do you realize that there's this free resources where you could actually get to uh, speak better English? And I pointed out one other girl from Puerto Rico who barely could speak English the first year I knew her. And within a year, Danish, and I'm not making, some things you cannot make up. Within a year, this girl became so good. There were even words that she was speaking. I'd be like, wow. So I used to point that out to the guy that, look, this girl's looking to become a police officer, go back to college, and she's she's speaking really, really good English within a year. If she can do it, you can do it, especially because you're that good. So, yeah, I just had to mention that. No, thank you so much. That's That's the kind of things that we want from people to share different type of uh, confidence building, uh, you know, advices, because it's very important for uh, people like that. I mean, I, I, I can totally understand what Kevin is saying, uh, Kevin Lawson, that what he's going through. And, and that's actually one of the biggest uh, comments that I get from foreign students who are not from here, by the way, sorry, from different countries. So let's say, for example, somebody called me from another country and I, I don't have any us members by the way i have people from australia different areas so they're like hey you know i just came from india or i just came from pakistan to this country this specific country and i don't feel confident enough to talk uh english or stuff like that i'm like yeah that's something you gotta break it down you gotta men- this is a mental thing but you do need a place to actually go out there and look at their local uh local areas uh community colleges are good for that too they speak they, they teach pretty good stuff in that this area i think colleges are good right because they give you all these reading uh, materials and it's more hands-on and everything so and then they're like go through that but then i say you want to learn about it you don't need to know about this stuff like only first thing is that you, you need to learn skills like what is domain what is active directory there's no english uh, i mean if you don't understand english that's a different thing then i'm gonna say okay you you don't understand the text that i'm putting out there or way I'm talking is a very different thing than, than you are not confident to just talk is a different thing, right? So that's where I kind of like tell people and then when they take the courses, people are good. And that's gonna give my own example too. I'm like, man, I was too bad in English. I couldn't have a confidence to talk about this stuff. And once I know my stuff, people start respecting me. Hey, Danish, can you fix this? Yeah, yeah, let me fix it. Two, two diff- three different words. I'm not getting there doing an essay with there. Yeah, my name is Danish and I'm gonna do some passive work with this guy so i'm not gonna sit there right yeah. if you don't know it if you don't understand it don't don't <clears> get into more conversations yeah, yeah let me fix it thank you very much uh have a great day uh what's the problem let me check it okay did you do this this few things and then you get on it that done 
And the rest is natural, man. People came to US like, you know, with nothing, no ABCD knowledge, and they're fluently talking in English right now. So that's something that's going to take time. You know, also, too. Let me just a quick one. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry, Steven. So uh, there's this guy, and we become really, really close. He's from Iraq. And um, I mean, he speaks possible English as well. I just want to share with this um, particular person that asked the question. This will help. And I'll, I'll, no, I'm no lies. On Friday, he was asking me the context, uh, the context in which to use a, a, a particular word that was a verb. So it was two different words. I I can't really um, remember those exact uh, the, the way the exact conversation worked. So from time to time, we've built this kind of relationship where he mentors me on saying things because it's been there a couple of months before I got there. It he is really helpful, and that's where building relationship also helps too. Especially for those of us that are new, I must admit. And sometimes it will come to me because he's seen that. He calls me brutals. I call him brother and all that, you know, so playfully. So he'll come to me. He'll be like, and I, I seem to be the only person he's able to come to because he has, we have that, he's built that relationship, which is where, again, relationship building is important, I, I must admit. And he'll, he'll be like, oh, so Femi, um, how do you use this word versus this? He knows the words, but he just wants to be, you know, so that, and I've seen his improvements because he does that from time to time as well. And which was the same thing that the other Spanish lady would do. He does his own thing, and then you could find some of these things on YouTube, and sometimes you'll go on um, Google Translate, for example, and all the tools, maybe you need to a college or library to have resources, and then he'll come to me, and he'll be like, okay, how do you say this? Is this correct? And then before you know it, he's already using it that way as well, not because he needs it like that, but I mean, it's just, I mean, part of the things I would just advise the same person as well, you know, the resources are. Steven, you want to add something? Um... Yeah, like with, uh, you know, not, you know, talking English that well. I mean, when I used to work up at the insurance company, um, we had our help desk over in Bangladesh, India. I think it's where, I think it's where, and one, then it moved over to Bangalore. If that's the same place, I'm not really sure. But that was, it was very hard. It was very difficult for any of our users, even for me, even for the other guy that I used to work, you know, my wife, my, my, my partner, even understand those guys or women. We get on the phone and like, hey, I, I just, I pick out words and I try to put them together going, okay, all right, this, this is like going to work. Now, they couldn't speak English very well. And then the users were afraid to call them because they were afraid they weren't going to get across their problem to them. By the time then it came to us, it was like, what the world are you working on? Oh, they got it all messed up. You know, then it kind of looks bad on them because that, that, that was our help desk. You know, it's kind of like, you know, that's what happens a lot, but, um, you know, you'll find that, but I think you'll, you know, you just learn a little bit more about English to just, I mean, if you're coming from sales, right. If he's, he's, if he's come from sales. Yeah, sales. I mean, I mean, already got the background right there. Right. I mean, he just talking on the phone, if you can just break, you know, keep it simple. I think Kevin, you can be better communicator than us. Well, I don't know why we were talking about this. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I just you got you got to sell stuff this. to people, you know. And Any, anyways, if you look at this way, if, I don't know if you watched my video in the beginning. I shared this Microsoft link with you, but look at look at right here. Look at this point right here. What are they going to teach you? Understand how to respond effectively through phone, email, chat, and social media. So you got to need these type of courses, right? To to then convert your sales knowledge into more of a technical knowledge. Hey. I used to talk about this password research and I will, I, will, I will give it to the IT people, but now I'm doing it. So how are they doing it? I'm sure you you have done this in the sales. I mean, I really don't need to go more into this because I just talk, I just, I just kind of realized this point that you were in sales, man. Okay. <laughs> if you don't mind, what did you, what, what kind of stuff do you sell? Yeah. What kind of stuff do you sell, um, Kevin? Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of see. Somebody has, has asked a question about, uh, is it worth getting the network plus? It's yeah. worth it in a way that if you feel like uh, you can understand or you will, be you will be basically taking it seriously. It's not worth it if you just go there and swipe the pages and just know about it from the book and just kind of like go through all this uh, 3,000 courses or something like that. Sorry, the 3,000 pages or anything like that. It's not worth it then. Why? Because you're just kind of like going through the material and you're not understanding anything because Network Plus co cover huge amount of broad areas, huge. 
So it's not worth it if you don't cannot do that, but it's definitely worth it if you go over it and you can achieve something out of it. So for example, I'll just give you my example right here. Now, how do we utilize uh, Necro Plus? Now, this may be a little bit different for you, but here's the thing. The way we utilize help this uh, Necro Plus is like this. We tell people that, okay, if you're gonna be following our learning path, which is the first learning path, the free course that I show you is equivalent to this learning path, by the way, it has more of the free stuff in there too. So you learn about ticketing system, Active Directory, Office 365, imaging, level one, level two troubleshooting, soft skills, right? So it covers all these basics, regardless of if you have experience or not, you probably will be better in your job. That's the goal of this path. But here's a new one that we are preparing right now. And if you focus attention right here, what I'm about to do right here, transition from help desk. It doesn't say any name, by the way. So that's the uniqueness of our teachings, right? We're not calling it a networking. We're not calling it a sys administration. We're not calling it a security administration. We're saying that transitioning from the help desk. You knew everything at the help desk level just to do basic stuff, even some of the advanced troubleshooting inside the operating system. But now you need to go down to the, the, the physical layers and you need to break things down. You want to become an engineer now, okay? So how do you become an engineer? And specifically for these jobs, doesn't matter what kind of advanced job you're looking for, you need to have a solid network. And when we talk about networking here, what we did in our platform, we are targeting this basic networking, network operations, network troubleshooting, routing and switching configuration, configured layer two technology, server architecture, server administration, because there is this thing, concept. When somebody says, I wanna become a network engineer, or I wanna learn networking, a lot of people will say, go to CCNA is the best certification in the, in the life. It is the best certification. If you wanna go towards what? Cisco networking, and it's gonna give you a, a good foundational uh, skills too. But remember, for someone who's brand new, CCNA is too much for them. CCNA is like, you either gonna love technology or you just gonna give up right away if you start with CCNA. This is the reason why we go in this unorthodox way of learning teaching you skills first, you like it, you like the approach, then you get into this network plus server plus. So here's the thing, what we have done in this path that which is not fully done yet, we are working on it and basically say there's no videos but the courses are available. So we're teaching network plus, which is the 007 and the server, which is the 00 plus. So we combine these two together now, right? So people may say, wow, that's a lot of stuff for people to learn, but remember, these are labs that are combined with our own skills. So we remove all the junk out of it. This means that you can go for the networking, but if you have a good target, you have a good focus, what do you want to achieve from it? Network Plus, do you want to become a Cisco engineer? Then I will say, no, just go for Cisco stuff. Why would you go for Network Plus? And then you know, going to go for, net, uh, for Cisco stuff, then of course, it's a waste of time. I just go straight to Cisco if you want to stick to Cisco. But if you want to become an overall engineer, remember Cisco is what? Cisco is a company. They're going to always uh, talk about their products. They're going to always talk about their security products. They're going to say, oh, our security is the best security. Everything is going to be Cisco related. And as soon as you land a job as a sysadmin or a network engineer, like a broader level network engineer, boom, you get to see so many different things. Then I say Network Plus is better than Cisco. I don't know if I make sense, but this is where you don't give up too easily. With Network Plus, it's a little easy to comprehend. You get in, you got the target, you know that after this, my core is good. I'm gonna go for any other advanced job, it doesn't matter. Even if it's a Cisco, then I'll just go with Cisco certification. After that, even that's like on topping of this networking skills, right? You learn Network Plus, then you learn CCNA and everything will be smooth for you. If you wanna become a penetration tester, uh, what what is the penetration tester? When they become penetration tester, what are these big YouTubers? Or, listen to them, one day just listen to them. What are they saying? Guys, you need to have a core foundational networking skills to become a pen tester. Guys, you need to become, a, if you want to become a cloud engineer, you still need to know the core of networking, subnetting, because that's exactly what you do in cloud too. Cloud doesn't mean you're not going to touch networking. Then if you want to become a network engineer, you got to know about network. You want to become a sys administrator, systems administrator, you, know, you need to work on DNS, DHCP, you got to hit the networking. So Network Plus is important and is, is as long as you know the focus. Yeah, Danny. Yes. Steven, um, I, I just thought to bring um, my knowledge base from when I was um, into virology. 
and when I taught, um, say, nursing and other medical students into, because it's, I think it's important for people to understand that um, information can be gathered from everywhere and anywhere. And again, like I, uh, like I insist, I, I think everybody seems to think that they have an idea, but there's all kind of information flying out there. And I just feel we, people got to be careful nowadays because all information doesn't qualify as the right information, but it's just good to be open-minded. And in saying this, um, when I was used to teach um, people in nursing, I, the first thing I would ask them, as I would ask anybody that's going into IT, for example, as I should be like, is how much of a broad idea, an honest idea, and that's why I like honesty. I told Keftech the same thing yesterday, it's this afternoon. How much of an idea of what they're going into, they know versus what they've had. And I try to make them as, I mean, I mean introduce them to other people that would tell them, first of all, I'll ask them, do you want to, are you willing to hear what I want to, uh, the reality versus what you want to hear? And now, why I say this is because um, I did hear things from, and I, I'm not, I don't have a problem with having people, an agglomeration of ideas from all kinds of people. I'll listen, but I'll sift through it as well. Now, I, I hear a lot, a lot of people will tell me, oh, just go do CCNA you make the money and all that. Yes, I want to make the money. Don't don't get me wrong. But my thing is I see there's no there's nobody that will be you can be that will be more honest to you than yourself. You would, we all have instincts. Mm -hmm. Now, um and I I told one of my friends, it meant well. All he told me was, "Oh, just go do CCNA." But I did my research, I spoke to people and I mean, I, I could see those I could kind of feel the people that are willing to tell me not based on their own emotions, but the, I mean, the big picture. So it was not now down to me to choose. And I felt, okay, even if I was going to, my route was going to be networking. I just felt that, and I still believe this um, within myself, even if I end up not taking the network plus, I know I have a, a well, right now, I do know that I have quite a well-rounded um, idea of what networking is based on my uh, self tutoring and also going through videos and speaking to other people of the whole architecture of what networking is generally now beyond just uh, Cisco. So that even if I don't do the network class, for example, and I decide to go take CCNA, I'm in a better position than just, oh, just go take CCNA. I mean, it's just my opinion because that's just vendor based versus having a broader well-rounded knowledge you know so i just thought again to highlight the fact that people are going to tell you i kind of things but be careful the kind of information you yeah i mean that's where with. a lot of that's people that i see in our platform so many people came with ccna and even higher level certification because they went through a class they did a b c d type of exam passed it okay good they know the knowledge but 90 percent of the people don't know how to apply this and, and when you ask them, what kind of position were you applying for when you did the CCNA? I want to become a help desk. Who told you to do CCNA if you wanted to become a help desk? That's, that's just a wrong approach. If they would have said A+, plus, I would have been happy because, yeah, I think that's a good approach. Because A+, plus, then you learn a little bit of skills here and there. What we're doing, we're, we're, we're adding these gaps around these certifications. But this is where a people who've done the CCNA gets a little dis discouraged because they're solely targeting networking switches, networking switches, layouts and everything, all that kind of stuff is done over there, but nobody's talking about ticketing Office 365. They're not going to talk about that stuff. So when they go to this job description, none of that stuff <laughs> talks about it. And they have this position, show me where they say you're going to configure a switch. Um, with that being said, if you got a, if you got the CCNA and you're going for the help desk position, Will they even take a look at that resume going, why is this person even applying for this help desk job? Or will they think that, okay, uh, maybe he has experience, but why would they want to hire somebody with a CCNA to come in? Because they may have to pay them a lot more. And they just may, they may not stay in that position more than a couple months until they get to know the network. And then they just may get on out and go somewhere else or, or maybe just jump up, you know, fast. I, I, I don't know, but why would a company... You know but what? if I would just say, you're, you're, I am not going to be in touch with that person because there's no way in the world I should give him a, 
eighteen dollar an hour job when he maybe he should make in thirty dollars an hour. Why would he? Why is he even applying for this? That's an extremely good point. You know what I mean? I have touched this point in my career videos too. That that's exactly what happens in most of the areas when people put a lot of stuff on their resume when they go for a lower level job, right? Two things can happen with this, Stephen. One, you put the CCNA, so you're telling a person that I am, I know, I know a lot, right? So you're saying that this is a good certification. People expect that. I'm not saying CCNA is a respectful certification. I'm saying it's not, I'm not saying it's not. What you're doing is that if you don't know how to use it, if you have done it that through radical understanding and you just have that paper with you, what you're doing is this, you're challenging another human being to ask you more tough questions now. Does that make sense, Stephen, now? Because you, you, yeah. presented, you presented yourself a person who's going for level one that you, a person was expecting maybe a college student or maybe a person with six months of experience, maybe one year of experience will come in and just kind of like, ah, I want to learn more. I'm passionate. I don't know none of these other technologies. I want to learn networking. I want to be a network engineer. I want to be a sysadmin in my field. So a lot of people are open to these ideas, right? They're like, they like to talk to. If someone comes to with that kind of knowledge, hey, I got CCNA and I think I'm pretty much ready. Somebody told me that that's what I need and I did it. A person may counter that in a little bit different way. And what Steven is saying is exactly how they're going to value you too. Then maybe they think you're too or qualified for this specific position, because I think you should be applying for network position. I'll give you a perfect example, Steven. One person applied for a helpless job. The person had networking knowledge on their resume, master degree with CCNA kind of stuff, certification. The person landed a job. They called the person back. I think you're not uh, you're not good enough for this job. We're going to give you a networking job. Mm. So the person got really happy, got a networking job, more money after 15 days got fired. <laughs> okay. Why? Because the person was mentally going for a help this position, help the skills. And that person think that I'm good at this stuff, but mm. they took a risk by going to a better and more higher paid position because they think that, okay, I'm going to learn a lot on just like help this in the networking too. As soon as they went to networking, the person was saying, okay, go do the inventory on switches, grab me all the configuration files and blah, blah, blah. All do these things. This is your job. The person couldn't do it. But now when you go, when you go for that CCNA, let's just say you jump right into that. Okay. Well, what about all this network or what, all, what about all these fundamentals that you just talked about? You don't really have that going. You're just going for one thing and it's all Cisco based. So again, it's like the Mac. It's like the Apple world. That's very, you know. This is, this you know, is a specific. very key point. I like I like what you're touching right now. You know what I mean? I mean, they're going to think, oh, okay, you're a Cisco guy. Am I going to let you touch my switches and my routers at work? Yeah, no. no. Do you know how to fix computers? Do you know how to do other things? Do you know how to work on Office 365? Do you know how to troubleshoot an application that goes down? You're going to say, well, I have a CCNA. Okay, no, that's not what I'm asking. No, no, don't, no, don't get us wrong. People who are watching us, they, they might come and just start challenging. No, no, I went to the boot camp. And after that, I got internship in networking and I became a network engineer. Yes, because you went for a route that was so specific and you right. got so much help in there that you went in with that and your mentally was so prepared for that type of uh, skills that I helped us then get to choose this later on the way we were preparing them. So this, this is a very key point and I... I'm going to challenge Cisco on this, by the way. Cisco started doing these live uh, sessions, women in tech, by the way. And I was like, okay, because I got a lot of women in tech in my, my membership. I have a lot of women that follow our platform and everything. Why can't I just go to my members and women in tech and say, why don't you guys do Cisco while they're promoting that? Hey, go just watch that, right? So Cisco come with this thing. Yes, woman in tech, if you guys want to become a networking engineer, you just do CCNA, you do Linux, you do Python. I'm like, whoo, whoo, hold on a minute. So you're telling everybody to do the CCNA, do the Python to the beginner who's just coming from, let's say, sales. And they're going to learn all these things like uh, from what you're saying is three courses in one row. Are you promoting this? And you're telling these three big three areas on live session, you're telling people to start that. We're going to give you access to these courses. These are like not live training. These are like self-paced training. Oh yeah, just do these three courses and you guys are going to have a great fundamental. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Is this about promoting Cisco over here? Isn't it? It's about just Cisco promotion going on over here, right? So I told them like, okay, how many of these women are going to actually land a job? And one woman came in like 
oh, we, uh, not to my question, but she was like, oh, I got a job because I was in inter doing internships. There was like uh, 20 more other, uh, uh, you know, uh, other students and I got accepted in that and now I'm working in Cisco. And I'm like, what about those 19 other women? <laughs> Did they get a job? What about them? You're talking about the story that is a one in a million kind of thing. We are talking about a story where 19 other women can actually go and find an IT job and they're not going to get a Cisco entry level job with this kind of stuff. They're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. Most of them are not going to get it. So where, what are they going to get it? Most of them can get a help desk job easier than a networking job. Anyone can challenge me that. And I will be happy to bring out some data and bring out some people or whatever it is. I will challenge that with them. And I'll say, let's go, let's do the challenge right now. Can a person land an entry level job with CCNA or can a person land a job with mixture of skills with A plus and stuff like that with that kind of level and they can they uh, land a health job. And I'll give, I, I think I'm just gonna probably win this battle but people can challenge me. This is an open challenge. Can I, can I just say something yeah. quickly again? Um, yeah. Sorry to, uh, I mean, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> so, um, no, no, you, you, you know, go. especially, Especially as someone who has... Um, Femi, Femi, one thing. I, I just want to welcome Yar. He's been here for so long. I'm not sure if he's he can come on the mic. Yar, are you there? The first time I'm seeing, so I'm not sure. But, but go ahead. Maybe we'll, we'll bring Yar again if, he's, uh, if he or she is available. Right. So, um, again, um, there's nothing as being um, really honest and being realistic versus um, being sentimental. And that's why I appreciate when I see um, people that have that kind of mentality. Like, um, again, are you tr do you want me to tell you the way it is or you want me to sweet talk you and tell me, uh, tell you what you want to hear? Now, being someone that was mostly self-taught, determined and all of that, I mean, all of us have our different stories and I've, I've learned from um, the other guys as well. And um, the moment you mentioned the server versus uh, the network plus thing, I was smiling because I have that same approach. There's a way I have my books arranged in my room that follows a certain pattern that's honestly no, no. I mean, I know I'm not making this up. I could take a picture for you see my books. By the way. It's, Maybe it's, it's natural. Funny. Maybe it's natural. Yeah, it's funny the way I do my things and sometimes it just aligns with some of the things I, I hear, you know. So now, um, again, I think the bottom top approach is very important. And it's also important, part of the things that I think is important for people to, and I, I can see that that's part of what you speak to as well, for people to understand is that we've, one has got to be patient in a world where patience is becoming like a luxury. Um, we gotta be, people gotta be patient to realize that what's the goal? The goal is, okay, this is probably, uh, you're trying to get to the top, most likely. That's ideally what a lot of people would want a desire to uh, to be. But you don't just, just like our parents would say uh, from way back when, you don't get to the top by, you don't, you don't just jump from like level one to 10 just like that. I mean, sometimes people, the odd, the odd situation, some might just land a $30 per hour job. So, I mean, it happens. But the thing is, you want to do the work. You want to do the work first, and doing the work means that you're going from the bottom rung of the ladder, and wow. step by step. In between, you probably might jump some steps, but at least you you're getting tooled up and all of that. And that's the point that I believe. Uh, that's where I think there's a lot of disconnect with the mentality that some people come with into the job. Oh, the bandwagon effect. Oh, ah, you could make $78,000. I mean, who's telling you all these things, you know? <laughs> so I just thought to add that as well. So I'm a realist and I, 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 I mean, agree. I can this see. Is, uh, and this is the this is a pretty uh, political area, I would say, because you may go to a different channel and the, the different channel may totally, totally destroy our, our idea. And they say, no, networking if you get into networking now then you are not going to go through this help desk stuff this is annoying blah 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 we are network engineers and they have a different mentality going on you may go into a sysadmin area like the sorry security plus channel and then they're going to be like no no why are you even going all this stuff just go through the stem kind of stuff so programs and just get into a uh, stuff like that honestly everybody's right over here it's really up to your mind how you can take this kind of if you feel like you want to get into networking then follow at least a more specific pathway and stick to it. Don't leave it then. If, you, if you're going to stick to it and then you're going to go into it, then of course, 
you'll be successful. But you're going to find a very few platform, by the way. And that's by me saying it. And you guys can do a research and you guys have common sense to do that. There are very few platform online that can do a step-by-step -step approach or some kind of guided approach. Now, you may say, let's talk about Pluricide. Let's talk about CBT Nugget, all these kind of things. Or bring it to me if they are doing so much of comparison and they're making a one learning path. After that learning path, it goes to a different course. Then there's mentorship. Then there's live sessions. Live session gets integrated. Every single thing is done for you for one specific role, by the way. The reason they can't do that, most of the people can't do that, is because they have to hire more people to do these kind of things. Now, we are, in a way, we're not competing with them. There are different type of platforms with more skills, more uh, courses, I would say, right? We are only focusing in one or two areas, and we're just mastering it. That's what I'm thinking. So like when, when I say help desk, right? So then we have this gazillion amount of, not gazillion amount, we have this huge learning path with a lot of labs, with a lot of mentorship going on. And every single thing, every single place is being touched, even to the resume, resume fixing, uh, even to when you go out to the job and you say, hey, I applied for this job, they call me back, what do I do? Now, are these platforms doing these kind of things? Then I say, man, they're doing an amazing job with that kind of people. They must have a lot of money. Uh, if we are doing it because we don't have that kind of money, so we're only specifically focusing on one or two careers right here. So the first career that I'm targeting is done. To me, I think I'm 98% of the time, like I, I, I could happily say that jobskillshare.org, we have done this whole hard work for this many years and we only finished one section, which is the most important section in IT, which is the most common section, which is called the help desk entry level, IT support level one. Getting into IT, it's a pretty big thing for a lot of people. So a lot of platforms have solutions, but it's just one or two courses, five courses, two or three courses, a little bit of uh, some kind of guidance. That's it. It's not a proper proper program that's what i'm that's why a lot of people confuse us with like udemy course oh why am i going to spend 499 dollars for premium membership when i can buy a nine dollar course and i'm like okay the nine dollar course you're comparing that with like more than 1000 videos plus labs and everything i mean that's is that the justice <laughs> i get into that kind of stuff. i'm like oh, how can you compare this though go ahead and compare and then later on like when they get to the level of femi or level of steven they get to realize, oh, okay, there's really more out of there. This is not just about videos right here. It's way more than that. It's the energy that we spend in here is way more than money also. I do not even charge for the things that we do like online or talk to people or no, none of that stuff is being charged. It's just being from throughout from passion. That we want to either help somebody like, okay, do you want to be doing this or you don't, you don't want to be doing this? Because I would hate for someone to just come in straight up, come from like Google and just pay immediately and then realize that this is not what they wanted to do because now it's more problem for us. We got to refund the money. We got to work with banks and everything, blah, blah, blah. Why would we want to take that kind of stress? I don't want to want to take that kind of stress. I don't want none of my, my, my trainers to take that kind of stress. So we are not into that. We want people, we want people to come and talk to us first, get some straight answers from us. Either you're going to be good for this platform or you're not going to be good for this platform. Straight up, we'll tell you, you invest money. And even before you invest money, we tell people that there's a free version available that so I want you to first go to the free version because people have landed a job from free version. Then if somebody wanted to get, go for the paid version, that, that's, a, that's a total personal decision that they took after that. So, D Danny. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, you know, there's something about honesty that um, I value a lot. I'm not saying I'm the most honest person in the world. But, you know, um, again, when I used to teach, teach a lot of life sciences and virology and all those things, microbiology, whatever, to my students, um, and I've been just like this for a long, long time. Um, there's this thing about patience that I keep, if you notice, I keep hammering on. And it all comes down to the fact that even if you start from like next thing, and I have nothing again, I've seen all of these things that you said, I'm not going to lie to you as well. So I continue to say laugh about some things you said because I can fully, fully relate with them online and offline where people will tell you, no, no, go take security plus. But there's one thing I always value the most, and this is generally about life. I just feel there's always going to be something missing if you don't start with the fun, if you don't have a good foundation, fundamentals, the be in the beginning. There was something in the beginning, 
And if we've been honest with ourselves, at some point, if one never had the fundamentals, irrespective of what sphere of life it's all one is dealing with, you're going to know there's something missing. You're going to know that, oh, you know what? You know, it's always going to come back to onto one way or the other, no matter how successful one is. So I'll, I'm I'm always paid. I, when I was when I used to, to back then, those life sciences and stuff, mm -hmm. I was always very particular about the beginning, the fundamentals, because one thing I realized is so long as this, that foundation is strong, you're patient with the fundamentals, everything has up because you're always, as you move on to the advanced, the medium to the advanced level, the truth is you're always going to go back to those building blocks. Something's mm -hmm. always going to trigger you going, going back to, oh, you remember when we, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought to add that. I, and that's where this this new phase that I'm starting right now, and this is going to be, by the way, on YouTube too, because I like to do on a YouTube, I like to do it on, on the website. So website has different features, YouTube is a different thing. But I like to do this because I'm going to start on the YouTube. So I want to tell people that when I make videos on these on YouTube, it's going to be exactly the same I'm going to be doing over here, but it's more resources. So remember, if let's say, for example, if I started in my YouTube channel, I just go there and I start talking about, let's talk about the TCP IP, but TCP IP in reality. Like some of the things I can actually show examples. Maybe I cannot do every single thing, but of course I can show some examples with TCP IP. Hey, let's just do FTP and how this is related to TCP IP. Let's do this server stuff. Let's do uh, how this is related to the TCP IP. Oh, let's do this software deployment. How is this related to TCP IP? So maybe I can connect something like that. And then this way people will start learning more and more and more uh, and kind of transition, right? And that is the reason why we added Network Plus and Server Plus, because for me, I think both are good certifications if somebody is there to guide it properly, right? If let's just like what we did with the A plus here, we have added an A plus right here, and then we added the A plus education with our skills. So now it's like a combo. So people don't want to waste their time. People can go over this stuff and they, oh, I'm actually, I'm actually even A plus ready. They may not be ready totally for exam because that's not my focus, but they may be, almost 80 to 90% ready for A+. plus, So it's not a wasting of time. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on in the next phase. For YouTube, it's going to take a lot of time to do this kind of stuff. I mean, this is not a small thing. This may be my next phase of my career, by the way, on YouTube. I, that's what I'm going to say. Because it took me five years to build this one area. Just imagine. But I learned so much from those five years that I can make this one a little bit more faster, I believe. So that's what I'm going to do next, that I'm going to be putting more videos in this area and just kind of, you know, removing this myth of this CCNA, Network Plus, this confusion. I'm going to remove that in a way that people can just go with one, one route. You need to know the networking regardless of what vendor or what certification is. You need to know the core foundational technology that we all work on it. I pick up this phone, I call somebody or I... <laughs> Uh, or go to this website and I transfer the web uh, file something. This is not Cisco. This is normal open standards protocols, right? That Cisco didn't create that. So we got to learn these kind of things. And when we, when we know this stuff, you go in, in, in tomorrow, you go for any type of jobs, any advanced level job, at least you're not going to feel like my foundational is weak. Am I going to be able to successfully do this? I don't know. I mean, I do a training in a specific way. Some people will hate me. Some people will like me. I just got a dislike now. So maybe somebody didn't like the way I was talking. <laughs> you know, getting back to what Femi said there about the foundation, think of it as like building a building. If you don't have a good foundation for the building, what happens? It's going to collapse sooner or later. And then what are they going to go back and look at the foundation? You know, that, that, that foundation being the fundamentals. Why did that building fall down? Uh, well, maybe they didn't do the foundation right. So it all starts at the bottom and at the top. So it just will collapse. It would just like pancake down on each other, you know, just like collapse like a deck of cards, you know? So Femi is right in saying that, um, you know, so you need the foundation. So all this stuff that, you know, is IT fundamentals, it's all the foundation you can build to see where you're going to go in your next steps. Without them, you don't know how things were started you need all those little fundamentals to kind of like get your mind to accelerate to the next steps, which is hard to do. I mean, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy to go to that next step. The fundamentals are the fundamentals, yep. but you can have, but you know, you say too about the Cisco stuff and you got to remember they're, they're engineers there. 
how much of their Cisco products have they actually created? They didn't go out and they stole stuff from, let's say you created this little technology. I'm going to take that thing from Danish. Hey, I'm going to put that inside my router, inside my switch. Now I can make it a Cisco, you know, a thing. So they I mean Cisco goes out and they steal technologies from all these little small businesses, these little startup companies. They buy them. They go, okay, I have that. They name it whatever Cisco product. They put it in their switches and routers. Now you got to learn whatever it is. So Cisco is great, but remember they're out there. They're taking. They're they're actually buying up all these little small startup companies, stuffing all that technology into their switches, into their routers. You know, and they're not developing stuff. I mean, what thing have? What thing do you know of, Donish, that they actually developed? Did they actually develop the actual iOS for that? I, for their operating system, or they take that from somewhere else, or did somebody else develop that for them? I I don't have any extensive knowledge on this type of stuff, but I'm I do know one thing that they buy a lot of uh, Heck yeah. companies. Because I, if you look I'll at it, you, I'll give you one example of uh, which company was that? I forgot now. So they're a lot of the wireless stuff. They actually the, buy. Well, up no, what about the IPS the IPS point. IDS security systems? Most of them, most of the stuff that they have bought from. And uh, open source, uh, which was really, really powerful in some time. I forgot the name of it, but um, yeah. like Firepower or FireSource, I forgot the name of the IDS IPS right now. I still use it, but I, I was just confused with that. So if we use that. This was used to be someone else, uh, you know, pretty famous rules that we have to apply on that. And it was an open source kind of technology and they bought it. Then they came up with this AMP, which is also another technology that they bought from other places. Yeah. And then they have this. Uh, different type of scanning abilities in there and that they also bought it from different uh, technologies. So of course, I mean, I mean, everybody does it, but I mean, really what kind of technology have they developed that, you know, they're, they can say that they came from out of their engineers is yeah. minds and not all these young guys that are just fresh out of college and college creating all this stuff going, Hey, we're going to, you know, bring it on out to the world about a, a year later, they're already, making it's like a million dollar company they buy for like a billion dollars all of a sudden those guys retire and they go and do something else with their lives exactly. you know it's crazy how the technology works like that but a lot of these big companies do not create stuff they go out and they and, uh, and they, they don't create stuff. and let me tell you one thing a reality they don't care about you how you're learning stuff either exactly. like I, I don't they want to give a damn if you were uh doing a cisco ccna the old way and the new way they have added a lot of uh, have you seen those push lately? Python, Python, Linux. When were they talking about this five years ago? Have you ever heard of them talking about Python, by the way? So now look at it. They are changing something and they know there's going to be a clash from their engineers, which is going to come very soon because some of the people are going to have to be like Microsoft, like we say, hey, cloud, Azure, go to cloud. We, we finished this application. You got to go to cloud. You got you to gotta, uh, implement Office 365 now. Cisco is not telling too clearly to their engineers right now who are just specifically straight up going for like hardware type of switches and everything. But the YouTubers who are on this, they're telling all the truth right now and say, guys, you need to know about Dockers. You need to know about, listen to Network Chuck. He's always on, it was new stuff that every day he's gonna come. Hey, learn about Dockers, learn about this, learn about that. Why is this coming out of the network engineer's mouth right now? Because the reality is that things are changing very fast. Cisco is not going to be there to babysit you and tell you all this stuff. They're going to do their business. They're going to run their business. Cisco's going to have some kind of cloud-based technology, or they're going to stick just just like stick with the hardware for it. You see, you see, you see the way they, they, they've changed the the exam pathways as well, and all of that, the structure, the pathway for the exams as well. <laughs> look at, I mean, you look look at this. What happened the last the whole. Uh, you know, there was used, used to be like a different level of certifications. Now they compile everything in one CCNA, right? So you got to learn a lot of stuff now. But the thing about this is that uh, cloud technology is a very good question. Cloud where Cisco is already in the cloud, by the way. I'll tell you one example, a few examples. In, uh, in the field of networking, I don't know too much, but uh, that's going to be like more of like a software defined networking, stuff like that. They're going to get it very heavily involved, which they are right now. But look at the uh, security side of it. Cisco already compete with Symantec. They totally destroyed Symantec at this point. My belief is this. They may not be able to do this if Symantec goes a little bit more advanced. But Cisco has what? AMP, Advanced Malware Protection Technology, something like that. 
So they have this AMP and then you basically connect AMP to your IO, sorry, the, the umbrella, umbrella and connects to some other places like uh, IDS, IPS, and they have this whole cloud system going on. So this means if you have, if you put that AMP system on your laptop, you can see the whole things in your laptop. Like for example, if you click on a command line and a command line gets uh, executed, the execution then goes to, let's say, backdoor IP address. You can see that in the AMP, which is very powerful, by the way. So what command was, what co command was executed? Then which IP is it still talking to? And can you block it to the network in one click? I can right click on it, block that whole hash, and it will get blocked in the whole network. So yes, they are doing something in the cloud, but I feel like honestly, Cisco is gonna move towards these type of technologies at some point. And then uh, you know, later on say, oh, yeah, our networking is there too, but this is what we are also very much focused on. Networking, how are they dealing with networking these days? I actually touched this a little bit. Uh, like for example, Azure is coming down to our on-premises area. Like for example, now you're gonna have an Azure on-prem type of solution. And they're calling this like a full stack solution. So full stack then have all these um, uh, equipment already, uh, already like inside the stack. So you buy the whole stack from a company. So Cisco is already selling the UCS, which is their kind of like their bigger hardware systems, right? So Cisco already have that stack available with Microsoft. You can think about it. See how they are two, both two working together now, and they become so sweet to each other. And now they are building the stack. Microsoft will be for people who want to do Azure stuff. Stack networking is going to be um, through networking from uh, Cisco. But Cisco is not the only player, right? There are other networking too, other, uh, hardware out there too. So they're building their own stacks. So it's going to be costing about like 200 plus thousand dollars. And then you buy the whole stack, you remove all this other junk out of there. You may have, uh, of course, Cisco is not going to go away anytime soon in this networking area. I'll never do that. I mean, I'll never tell a person that networking is going to go away. I mean, what about those floors that you have, different floors? And then I'm going to have stacks around there, right? This is going to have what some kind of a switch device to connect all these floors, right? So, of course, that technology is going to be there. This is going to get more advanced in a way that maybe the switches are going to be connected to a cloud, which is already happening now, right? There are switches that are connected to a cloud these days. And you can basically manage your switches from the cloud. Um, some of the networking you can do from the cloud. So Cisco already have that kind of stuff. So to answer your question, yeah, that's gonna get, gonna get more cloudish and on-prem, which is happening currently right now. So summary, we talked about how to learn IT skills as a total beginner. So if you're a brand new person, and if you're watching my video right now and you have skipped the whole two hour video, please go back start from the start, listen to every single thing that we talked today. Everything is extremely important for you because you're brand new to IT technology and every single word that we spoke today is beneficial for you. I also mentioned free stuff today more than paid stuff because my goal is for you to actually learn first the free method because that is very powerful. It is content that it has no value, by, by the way. It's no less content, it's no more content, it just has no value. We keep adding, 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 adding. I don't know if you're gonna, if you're gonna tell me that, how much can you charge for 3000 videos, then maybe you can give me a value for that. But I can give a value for my 3000 plus videos that's, that's available for free in my network, my whole platform. So there you go, 3000 plus videos, no value, and keep, we keep adding on it. And I did not pay Steven today, I did not pay Femi today, they came for free. There you go, and I sent some checks to them. <laughs> And then I showed a paid uh, version too, because there are many people out there on the internet that say, you know what, I got money. I don't want to go through a little bit more of a stressful time or maybe a little old content. Teach me, teach me. I don't, I don't care about another stuff. I use my, I use my uh, searching, I search. I came to the conclusion that I want a trainer. I want somebody to train me or I want labs, by the way, maybe not even trainer. I just want labs. Then paid is the option. Nobody's going to give you labs for free. Microsoft does give some of the labs for free, but those are Microsoft labs. You can do certain things. You can do certain things. I mean, really, you can go and fi uh, find something online. You can definitely do that. But you got all these solutions out there with you. You either take it, you don't take it. At the end, to be honest, I'm going to go to sleep and you're going to do your own life. I mean, of course, um, there's nothing. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing till I die, right? And you're going to be keep <laughs> doing things when you get to the point. So. And then that's the that's what I wanted to share. And uh, now whoever disliked my video, this one person. 
here. I don't know. Like this is a good example right here. I'm still gonna get dislikes. When you like dislike or, or like videos, does it does it show you somewhere? Can you find out who did that or no? It or no, YouTube no. blocks that. YouTube YouTube doesn't let you do that. Yeah. Do they well, know who did it? What's that? Sorry. Do they know who did it? I'm sure they they probably know that. Is there? From, but they don't want to let this is like more a private uh personal thing that people don't want if they do that then people are going to start maybe blocking uh, real dislikes but what whatever what whatever video really sucks right um <laughs> and what the, what the, this thing is that i it's very um it's not like i'm I, this never by, by the way impact me in any way or any shape because i always make a video and i forget about it i, I post it and then i use it like okay yeah, you go back to that video but it can totally mess up new people who are doing YouTube. They get really disheartened or discouraged yeah. because I see some people that post a video and without even looking at the video, some people hate you for some reason, they dislike the video. Yeah, Danny, I was going to say something along that line. I don't know. I guess it's also because uh, it speaks to, um, we live in a different world now, but even at that, uh, it's obvious that you have a thick skin my, you know, growing up, my mother, bless her soul now, uh, she, you know, the way we were brought up, <laughs> at least where I was brought up, like, it don't matter whether, I mean, <laughs> I just we, feel that you, you, you're not doing things because you're trying to, you, you wanted to be liked. I don't know whether you, <laughs> you, you I'm trying to understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> I feel like I may get more, dis I, I may get more dislike because sometimes my tone is a little bit like a. Hey, huh? <laughs> sometimes I, I may feel like I may get more dislikes from some people because sometimes my tone is a little bit of like a uh, kind of like a competitor type of thing, right? Like I'm like, I challenge you. <laughs> so, you know, one of my friends that has a YouTube channel, he has a food channel, you know, he kind of finds it amusing actually. You know, it's kind of just funny because sometimes we just imagine that people, just, some people just find it um, uh so it's just kind of seem to derive some fun from disliking for no reason. Some people do it genuinely, but I just have this theory that some people just like to do it for the fun of it. So I just find it funny, basically. So I'm well, just glad I, I that... Give you one, I'll give you one theory. So if a YouTube video is like, for example, I shared just a course uh, recently or anything, and the YouTube video has like, say, 500 likes and zero dislike. So you, the person, I mean, I have seen it. You want to be that first person to break that record. Ah, I'm going to say dislike to that. So yeah, it can be it can have that fun side of it too. But the thing is, is that why why would I care about this stuff? Like my I know my what I'm providing yeah. is valuable right. right to people, and I don't care right. about the dislikes. And now remember, I I would remove like and dislike if another guest speaker talk on my channel. I don't I know their value is so good that I don't even care about people looking at or having a dislike or like option. I don't even care about that. I feel oh, like that. And like you can actually, you like you can actually remove that if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. If I, I can remove this whole dislike likes from, and I did some videos. Like for example, uh, some of the videos when I talk about, like let's say this learning pad that I'm going to talk about in one of my videos. That hey, we got a new learning pad. Let me talk about it. So I know how much time I'm spending on this, how much of effort that I did on this. Why is YouTube going to decide what's good for me or not good for me? Right? Or mm. I know people can decide that, but some people may not like this because there are people, they are my competitors in a way that there are platforms, there are big people out there, right? So they may just not like this whole idea of that this guy is providing so much of value that is totally destroying our what we're doing. That's we're, that's we're charging three thousand dollar for a plus tutor or live training while this person is charging almost nothing in the free content where people can land a job. So you see that totally is a problematic for a company. Now I'm not trying to be a B right here, like B, you know what I mean, to mess with them, but I got my own way of doing this. You, you want to compete with me, go bring the, bring the same content, go bring the same value, go bring the same labs in the same membership price, do that. And then you are doing great job. I'm not, a, I'm not doing competition with, by, by the way, nobody. I am creating the way I think, and I sit down with my trainers. I, I approach the, the, the issue, like for example, networking. Why didn't I just call it a network engineer, by the way? So Femi will be like, why did you just call it a network engineer? While there, you know that network engineers are not supposed to just do Cisco stuff. They're doing all other things. Then here you go. We got a problem right here, right? 
So then I'm going to say transition from help desk because my member, the people that follow me in this platform, I know that how they think. I know that from the data. I know from the surveys. I have, I'm not a kid that is just going to come and create something on a fly, like without blindly, right? So I came over here. I decided to add Network Plus, Server Plus combination with my own training, with my trainer's training. And now you got a combo of something very powerful. Now, this is going to totally destroy what? As, uh, original Network Plus certification, original Server Plus certification, and I don't care about that. CompTIA is not paying me anything, right? CompTIA is nothing like in my platform, in this platform. CompTIA is something that's good, that has value in there, but if you can get away with skills, you get away with it. I went away with skills. That's how I did it. Many of my platforms, many of my learners, many of my Students have done it that way. And I'm going to promote always that. And I'm going to always say that, yeah, if you want to do CompTIA Plus certification, go do it. If you can use it, utilize it, that's good for you. I'm not going to stop you from that. It's still a good thing for you. So I'm not discouraging people from not going and doing that. But if they're going to come and take these trainings, then why would I tell somebody to just go outside and do, do another training of Network Plus? Does it make sense, right? Why would I do that? I mean, I'm making them spin around and they will never end. I want to give them some solutions so they can read, learn, practice, get it done and then move on. That's my thing. So I'm going to get hate for that. Why? Because a new network engineer will come in and will have no clue about jobs to share. And immediately the person will say, this, this guy's a scam. He's trying to make money without me, them going into my, my YouTube channel that I've been doing for nine years. How many people we have so far helped? How many people we have so far achieved the goals? The person's not going to take that kind of time, right, Stephen? I mean, if, you are, if I'm a brand new person, watch a video. I'm not going to go to your platform and do a research on you. I'm just going to say you're a scam. Dislike. Now, can CompTIA, like, if they found out, they know that you're doing this stuff, can they approach you or something like that? Maybe email and say, like, hey, you know, you're putting this stuff out there, blah, 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 you're profiting from it. Can would they, would they ever do something like that or they don't like, they wouldn't never get into something? CompTIA cannot do this because CompTIA is a nonprofit organization. So CompTIA is going to only can do this when you say that I will give you a CompTIA certificate. Oh, CompTIA cert okay. CompTIA, CompTIA knowledge is available for free to the whole world, like professormesser.com is, right. is, uh, is, is available for free. And then there's a uh, uh, private educations, private uh uh, private companies, colleges, all this kind of stuff, they don't, they're not certified by CompTIA, right? You cannot even get a certificate from college, which is college say that you're certified with this CompTIA specific course, but they cannot certify you with a CompTIA certificate. That's the thing that they can come and basically challenge you with that. Is there any other big, is there any other big ones out there besides CompTIA that do certifications? I mean, as far as like a name, you know, like to have all the, all the ones like, you know, a, you know, a plus. Oh yeah. Like, uh, well, the, what's, what's that HDI to help this, uh, Institute, um, um, something like it's that. Funny. I don't know what it's called. Uh, ITIL have a support section. Uh, oh, yeah. but those are, CompTIA is kind of like, I think the well-known one that. Right. I, I mean, that's actually what I am. I mean, oh, okay. A lot of people are doing, uh, so I recently talked to and maybe I'll be putting that video. So there's a nonprofit organization, by the way, if you don't guys don't know, I know I do a lot of YouTube stuff, but jobscareshare.org is being shared by actually at the federal level. So there's some sites that I shared in one of my video that they share my site for education and skill learning in the federal sites. And also the uh, Canadian International Airport Facebook page also put us in uh, by promoting women basically, because I do a lot of stuff for this stuff area. So I forgot to what I was mentioning. So one of the video that's coming soon, by the way, one of the nonprofit approached me and they're doing like a hands-on uh, training inside California. So they do like this kind of stuff. So I was, I asked them that, what kind of education are you guys giving to people? They're like, Oh yeah, we, we buy a Coursera Google uh, support certification. I was like, huh? Okay, good. But why didn't you guys go for a plus? Because Google has its own problems out there. Right. When he says a Google support specialist, this is actually a certification. You know that Steven? There's actually, uh, I've heard it from you guys. Yeah, I, I didn't know that they actually had one, but yes. So Google support specialist. No. Google. Is it worth anything or is it just kind of like worth a, like a piece of toilet paper? I mean, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I did a comparison between Google. So if people are interested, they can really go into the jobs to share and just type jobs to share versus uh, Google, or you can just type, type jobs could share versus a plus com t i did two comparison between these two 
Uh, and then basically it's good for the name only, like I said, good, especially the Google one. It's very rare you hear about that one in the world. Yeah, like it's in the advert yeah. and I just like, never thought it made sense personally. Like under six months and they're promoting this stuff. I'm sure some people may like it because Google, uh, but of course there's money involved in it too. So you would want to invest money here or you would want to invest money somewhere proper, I would say, then maybe I would I would I would pick proper, but I then I feel like I'm gonna be promoting myself right now. So <laughs> I let, yeah, I, let, I don't know if you really go in and say you're a Google, uh, you got a Google, uh, you know, cert. I don't know. I never heard that from anybody, or I never talked to anybody who ever had one. Or and it, and it, it has it has this little bit of uh, like you know, look, think about it. So I I follow by the way this of you, and this is also a skill thing. If you guys want to learn more skills, just go to SpiceWorks and start yeah, looking at the really tickets. I, I this is my first place that I start learning stuff. By the way, there's so many technical people that I start getting suggestions and everything. So this is my to go place and still come over here uh, and learn. So this is the area where you're going to feel like the heat of Google versus A plus and other training. And you're going to now, now hear from people who are managers who are going to hire you it managers, right? And if they're going to say Google sucks, why would I hire somebody with that kind of blah, 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 who is Google to decide this kind of, stuff like that who is google to uh, in the google are they working on microsoft stuff while all the jobs are um looking helpless or all the pc uh, level type of stuff right so think about it. is google using microsoft laptops in google or chromebooks yeah so it doesn't doesn't i it has a little bit of touch out there right but uh i mean it depends on the trainer to trainer too if they if somebody is doing using a google certification by the way but the trainer is using it to teach his knowledge like what we are doing like so what, what I'm, I'm gonna give you my example so we are more on CompTIA side of it right so here i'm you say CompTIA will have a problem CompTIA will not have a problem because CompTIA will love me why because i'm promoting CompTIA in a way right because i'm saying that i can give you i cannot give you a certificate for CompTIA so where where are my members are going to go buy a certificate who who are they going to invest money with CompTIA yeah. To get the real certificate, they have to go to CompTIA if they want a certificate. But I say that in the beginning that I'm not about certification. So don't come to my platform to think that you're going to become certified, right? Or get ready for certification. So then I say, even if you learn all these skills, still it's, it's related to CompTIA. It's designed in a CompTIA format, right? For example, okay, what do we, what do we, what do we, what am I talking about here? Let's just go to this one course, uh, Network Plus. So this Network Plus course is basically a course that is developed on top of what it's developed on top of the practice labs so is practice lab a comptia no it's not a comptia can practice lab give you a certification from comptia no not at all so i'm not even not, i'm not even sharing nothing from comptia i'm sharing whatever is my partner sharing with me and i'm partnered with them legally right so now if you look at it comptia is this one that this is one the one that we we started so the way we designed this, let me and uh, Steven, just to give you guys a little clear idea, that if you look at the first module, it says introduction to OSI model in progress. So this is all labs, right? So they're going to give you some introduction based on the lab format, but they will never give you a full theory. Why? Because they want to focus you more on labs, right? They don't want to lose you with theory. Does that make sense? So you have a lab now. Then you have what we are doing in this. Uh, where did I open that here? Then we have this exactly exactly the same thing from the lab now what's the difference the lab is a pdf format and then you do it so it takes you more time does that make sense now our trainer goes out there and he basically creates a full video on module one so now if you're flying in the airplane you're somewhere and you don't want to do the hands-on lab because you can do that with the phone i mean to be honest you cannot practice this kind of stuff on the phone right right you cannot turn on the web server and routers on the phone like that. That's just crazy. So what would you do for you? We made it easy. We made the whole video for all these labs. And then it becomes more of like a, a video with the lab now. And on top of that, I add my own lectures to make it more smart, meaning meaningful. So this becomes a very powerful solution for someone who is learning practicing got bored with the practice go back to the video got bored with the video got back to the practice does that make sense this is how we designed our platform so comptia can never come back to us like oh why you guys are 
doing this type of stuff. I'm not, I'm not even using your stuff. I mean, but it helps people in a way that I don't want to waste people's time either because then I use what is being used, what is being researched. They have done their research too. They're not babies in this, this area. So we take that and we, whatever is, I think is more important for me to share as in skills, I do that to make sure that someone can become a proper engineer, land a job, perform well, have less stress. And then later on, they have so much knowledge that they have all done all this full course. It's gonna take you 40 plus hours to even finish this whole lab. Once you do all of this stuff, when you finish it, then bam, you're even ready for certification. At least 70%, 60%, you're ready. And you're ready in a proper way rather than you just doing like blah, 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 and just pass a test. Uh, I, I was going to add something that uh, about the Google, um, <laughs> what, what it's called there. Uh, I noticed sometime early last year up until I think probably towards the end of the year or early this year, they were running, they were always running these adverts. I mean, and Google owns uh, YouTube, Google, same thing on YouTube. Sometimes when I was watching some videos on, on um, computer videos and stuff, and I'm like, uh, I can see where this is going, but apparently it's not caught up yet. So suddenly I stopped seeing that video because I was always thinking the same thing in my mind, like how, what are, what are we supposed to use this for? Maybe sometime in the future, they come up with something that's able to compete with Microsoft. I, I don't know, but not, I just noticed that they just stopped. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have the same feeling. They, they may have something in their yeah. mind and that's why they came on. But this is a pretty big area for people. Like, for example, um, I mean, people can ask me, hey, how's the business, right? Well, what, what kind of, because of course, it's not just about you doing videos and, and you know, of course, you're, you have a kid and you're, you're feeding these other people and everything. Well, how are you running your business? So this, this area is a pretty big area in terms of business, right? Like, for example, if you, are, you become a pretty good at your skills for me one day and Steven, and you're like, okay, I got all these skills. I can teach somebody because that's my income now. I want to do that because I love that. So that's a business right there, right? So uh, maybe Google probably thought of this, that this is a pretty big area. There's a lot of uh, you know money involved in this. Uh, a lot of people want to get in there. A lot of platforms want to get into this stuff. Um, so maybe there's some something behind it, you know? But uh, at that level, I think Google is still not going to like, uh, for some reason, I feel like Google is going to have a pretty hard time with me. So <laughs> I'm nothing in front of Google, but I'll give everybody pretty tough time <laughs> as long as I have this kind of energy. Uh, and uh, not, not to challenge anybody, by the way, I'm, I'm promote CompTIA, I promote Google. I mean, I, to be honest, I made a video on Google certificate that, hey, if you have money and if your resume is not working, maybe you should go for these type of certification. Why? Because it's a value on your resume. It says Google. When this, when when somebody looked at it and they're like HR people, they're like, wow, you got a Google certificate. Now they may not have that kind of mind of an IT professional who can kind of like you know have a little bit of negativity towards Google, right? A HR person may say, wow, you got a you got a certificate from Google, man. That's pretty cool. So you you see that. It can be used positively. So everything has a positive thing. You know, you, you learn skills. It's just positive, to be honest. There's no negative. Just don't waste your time. Just don't, just don't go left and right. And just be specific. So I think this is good enough information today. So I wanted to make one long video on how to learn IT skills as a beginner. So after this, I'm not going to make any more videos on this, on this topic. This is pretty detailed. You have Steven came in, your Femi came in. So first of all, I want to say thank you to both of you that you came in and you spent some time with me. I did not even invite anybody and you guys came in, joined me, which is something that I appreciate. I mean, there's nothing more than that. You have to just appreciate something. Yeah, we figured maybe you needed some help. So we figured we'd come in here and make it look better. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, thank you so much, man. I mean, this is, I appreciate because it's really, uh, it's, it's valuable knowledge that you guys are providing. It's Femi, you too, man. You're always here and, giving some cool and why he's a freaking teacher you teach what you Femi, what, are, what, what are you going to teach on job skill share by the way um i'll just pay attention for now because uh, <laughs> honestly i i just think i'm a moron at this point okay do you um, want to open your own channel can we promote you i mean it doesn't have to be my my platform i mean i'm always an honest person <laughs> i don't know that I've, i mean I, I i'm not supposed to stand where you steven keftek man and a couple of people um 
who's, who she'll be standing. I should have, I should have been saying nothing, but um, it's just some passion and based on where I come from and honesty and you know all of it together. And like I told you, you know, I was reading and then I'm like, it just popped up. I was actually going through something on a Keftex channel that I put up today, and then it, that was in between reading and all of that. And then oh. once it popped up, I was like, oh. So I messed it up for a lot of people. Okay, like, Keftex, sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, maybe in the future, yeah, but anything that has to do with, with a YouTube channel right now will probably be with respect to my my fiance. We, we're trying to open a YouTube channel for she because she's, she's into everything cooking and in, uh, interior oh, nice. decor. Oh, nice. So we're looking at, I'm looking at doing something. And well, that I mean, you can always that. ask us for suggestions or maybe some tips on YouTube because we've been on YouTube for a long, long time. So there are some tips from where do you okay. add a video? Or maybe you want to create a membership and stuff like that. And, and let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with charging people for your own skills. I'm not trying to make it like, I'm not trying to push you towards payment or anything like that, but there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. But there, a lot of people get stuck with, how do I add my videos? How do I do this membership, blah, blah, blah. I can, I can help a lot in this area. All right, thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, Fihar, I mean, Fihar, this, I mean, anyone in the chat, I want to say thank I always say thank you to them, right? I always like, put go on the down and say, hey, thank you so much for being with me. And um, man, I like to just come in random timing. So forgive me for this type of, uh, you know, mess around with people. You know, I just going to go with it. Ah, I think I feel good. Let me just go live. So um, after two weeks, by the way, when Ramadan is over, we're going to do a whole big uh, technical training like I do in my trainings, my videos. So I'm planning to do an Office 365. If you guys are interested, maybe just let me know. I think we should do one, one big Office 365, two, three hours long training, get it done. So anyways, thank you for sharing with me today. Thank you for joining me today and see you all. And I'll talk to you in the next videos. And uh, do, do watch my virtual box video for people who wanna build their own personal labs in home. It's gonna be Give something it a thumbs this way. Right up. Thanks, Steven. Thanks, Danish. Take care, guys. And whoever disliked my video, please remove that dislike. Or else I'm coming after you. Wasn't me. Thank we you. Bye bye. We love him. It's okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. Take care. All right, bye bye.